Hello and welcome to another single video Let's Play compilation, this time for Riven. However, this one's slightly different from the previous ones. You might call this one Remastered. For the other compilations I've made so far, I just combined the original videos into a single video. And this was possible because I kept all my original edited video files, which are much better quality than the versions on YouTube. However, since Riven was my first Let's Play, the quality of those original videos is kind of bad. There's lots of blurriness and compression artifacts, screen tearing, the audio is in mono, and other issues. So what I did here is I actually re-recorded all the gameplay footage using the 25th anniversary release of Riven to match my original narration, which I did want to preserve in all its awkwardness. I did my best to match up the new footage as much as possible, but there may be some cases where the timing of some things doesn't match up. I did my best, but do keep that in mind. If you want to know more about how I did this, please check the video's description, and also check out the end of the video where I reveal how I made sure the random puzzle solutions matched my original Let's Play. And now, back to past me for the Let's Play. Hello and welcome to this Let's Play of Riven, the sequel to Myst. In these videos I will play Riven and give commentary on the puzzles and some background information to the characters, locations and events. Undoubtedly I will get some things wrong, or forget some things, so please correct me in the comics if you notice anything that's wrong. Before we begin, a little bit of history. The Myst series of games tells the story of the Dunny civilization, an ancient race that lived in the giant cavern beneath the earth which is located in New Mexico. The Dunny had the ability to write extraordinary books. With these, you can link to the places described in the books. Any place you can imagine, they could write down and then visit through their books. Unfortunately, a disaster befell them and the Dunny civilization was destroyed. In Myst, the first game, the player finds one of these books and uses it to link to Myst Island. There, he discovers the history behind the island and the people who live there, Atris, a descendant of the Dunny, his wife Catherine, and his sons Cyrus and Achenar, who betrayed him. At the end of Mist, you free Atris, who had been trapped in Kavir, an island in Dunny. And he thanks you for helping him, but tells you he might need your help again. At the start of Riven, you are still in Kavir with Atris, as there is no easy way to get out of the Dunny Cavern, the old tunnel blocked by earthquakes and volcanic activity. So with that said, let's begin. Riven was created by um, Cyan Worlds, Published by Red Hat Entertainment. It was released in 1997. And Cyan are the original creators of Myst, but they made only three of the main five Myst games. Myst, Riven, and Myst 5 End of Ages. Myst 3 Exile was created by Presto Studios, and Myst 4 Revelation was created by Ubisoft. We are in Kavir, on in Dunny, and that's Atris. Thank God you've returned. I need your help. With what? There's a great deal of history that you should know, but I'm afraid that I must continue my writing. Well, there's a surprise. Atris must write something. Yeah. That has never happened before. Most of what you'll need to know is in there. Keep it well hidden. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. For reasons you'll discover, I can't send you to Riven with a way out. That would be but too I easy. I can give you this. It appears to be a linking book. Back here to Dunny. But it's... Actually, a one-man prison. You'll need it, I'm afraid, to capture Gan. Who's Gan? It is being so clear, out, Catherine. Now signal me, and I'll come with a linking book to bring us back.
That's a big book. There's also a chance, if this all goes well, that I might be able to get you back to the place that you came from. The gateway image in that book doesn't look so good. So, Riven begins. Okay, we just get to ride in Riven and... Oh. We've been trapped. Well, short game. We've already lost. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play and... Um, maybe you'll watch some of my other videos. Wait a second. Who's he? Well, Cho, to you too. Uh, sorry, I don't speak Ravenese. He's trying to say, give me the book in Dani, but he's not really good at it. So he just switches back to Ravenese. I'm not going to give you the book. I need this book. Oh, okay, okay. Take the book if it means that much to you. Damn you. Okay, he's been shot. That's what you get for messing with me. Not that I had anything to do with him being shot, but I can at least pretend I did. He's dragged off screen, never to be seen again. Now what? I'm still stuck in this cage. Oh, more people. Okay, yeah, you take the book. It's not as if I need that thing. Oh, well, he is nice enough to release us. Wait, come back. I need that book. Well, if he uses it, he'll be in for a big surprise. Come back, you. Hey, where did he go? He's gone. Oh my god! It's the guy who found us. I hope he's not dead. Oh, I know he's not dead. He's actually just uh, been stunned. He's got a nice dagger li lying next to him. Okay, so we're on Riven, and we're out of the cage, so we can actually go do something. Unfortunately, Atris was really vague, so it's not all that clear what we really need to do. But fortunately, Atris did give us more information than just the little thing he, things he said, in the form of his journal, which we can get through here. Reading journals is an important way to get information in missed games, and Riven is no different. Now, reading a journal might not be that interesting to watch in a video, so that's why I'll always do all of the journals in this game in separate videos. So I'm going to end this video now, and in the next video I will read Atris's journal. And if you're not interested in watching that, then just skip ahead to the third video, where we'll continue exploring. So, see you next time. Welcome back. To gain some more insight into what the background of the, the story is and what we actually need to do in this game, we're going to read Atrus's journal. If you're not interested in hearing me read a journal, then just skip to the next video. Just a word on these dates. I don't exactly know what they mean. It's definitely not 1987 because the 
first four missed games are set much further in the past. Okay, let's begin. 87 6 10. They held for more than 30 years, but the corrections I made to Riven have finally failed. The island has resumed the familiar pattern of decay that is the hallmark of my father's work. I must now erase to implement this new patch before it's too late. I only hope that my revised theories are sound. 87 6 16. Revisions to Riven completed. There are still a number of minor adjustments which need to be made, but the basic corrections have been entered and should be working. Something's not right. I've been monitoring the instruments for several hours now, but have thus far observed no change. It's possible that I've made an error, though I've checked my entry against my pre-notation and can find no discrepancy. I've not had a rest in nearly three days, so it may be that I'm just not seeing it. If the fault is with my foundational assumptions, however, perhaps after a short rest I will see something. 87.6.18 Success! It appears that my repairs have been effective after all. The gateway image has become noticeably clearer, and although it is impossible to notice with absolute certainty, the island seems to have quieted itself. Just a few more weeks of work, and I should be free at last to go there myself and attempt to bring Catherine back. The past eight months have left me little time to think, to devise a strategy for getting her out of there. I've received no sign from her in all that time. I'm afraid that... no. I must assume that she is all right lest my fears undermine my efforts to bring her back. 87.6.19 I did not create the Age of Riven. Unlike my father, I have never presumed to have such power, and yet the future of all those who live there has fallen into my hands. So far I've managed to read the page before it turns. The island continues to appear stable, and I would like to believe that I have saved a dying world. But the theories of one individual cannot support the lives of real people indefinitely. I must get everyone off of Riven as soon as possible. The problem now is Gen. I'll never be able to rescue Catherine and relocate the islanders if he is still the man he once was. I haven't seen him in over thirty years, but his history forces me to assume that he is still a threat. His myopic mission to restore the Dunny civilization has left too many innocent cultures dying in its wake, and would continue to do so were he to once again be free of the confines of Riven, or the Fifth Age, as he coldly titled it. The universe has been safe from his corruptive influence for the last 33 years, because no one has been able to leave that age, the last linking book out of Riven having been lost in the starfisher upon my return to Mist. That was my intention, to maroon my father on Riven by removing all the existing links to other worlds. And since the art of constructing books had long been lost with the fall of the Dunny, he would be trapped there for the remainder of his lifetime, and effectively segregated from the countless other worlds that he would have invaded. In effect, that is what we achieved, but the way it fell, however, was no one's ideal. Though the sting of the incident has gradually faded from my memory, the deep pain of the responsibility for what actually came to be has never left me. At the time it all seemed so clear, Gen's destructive path could not be allowed to continue. But it was never my choice that the innocent inhabitants of Riven, who had already suffered so much, would be the ones to pay for it. Enough! To dwell in the past is to die in the present. The situation is not the same as it was then. The knowledge I have acquired in the year since that time has yet to be applied to this problem. A7620 I think I have the solution. Why it did not occur to me sooner, I do not know unless the idea of it had been pushed out with the thought of my sons. A prison book. Many years ago, during a hunting expedition through the ruins of Dunny, I chanced upon the formula for a most unusual type of book. Unfortunately, due to the fact that my father was then in the habit of confiscating my discoveries, I was forced to leave it behind. Years later, however, as part of my efforts to protect the vulnerable worlds linked to, the linked to the books in my library, I was pleased to find that I could still recall most of the formula, and with little experimentation quickly succeeded in creating one of these devices myself. The procedure is actually quite simple. By altering key lines of text but slightly, a normal linking book's connection can be partially severed, such that anyone who attempts to use the book will be permanently trapped in the dark void of the link, that is, unless someone else then uses the book, at which point that person would become trapped and the first person displaced back into the world. The technique can be applied to books that have already been written, changes to the original text being so slight that anyone who is unfamiliar with the code will be unable to detect them. 
If indeed my father has not changed, what better bait could there be than a book that appeared to be a link back here to Dunny? 8772. Trouble. My nightly analysis of the island's condition has revealed that the tremors have begun again. The pattern, however, is new. The disturbances are the result of the changes I have made. This did not at first concern me, however. Tremors of this type were one of the possible side effects that I had anticipated during this initial phase of the island's readjustment. Still, in order to verify my assumptions, I decided to calculate again, incorporating the new data. The results were not what I expected. The damage to the understructure is more extensive than I'd realized. I can no longer go to Riven as planned. Catherine, forgive me. 8773. I must act while I still have the time. The signs are barely visible, but there's no question that the island's deterioration is accelerating. Total collapse is imminent, unless I can keep ahead, and that is becoming increasingly difficult to do. 8775. With every passing moment, I gain a clearer picture of the incredible chaos that my father's economy of words has yielded. But it is a dismaying process. The complexity of the problem is overwhelming. There is no end to this. The last few days have all but convinced me that the collapse of Riven is inevitable, and that, at best, I can only strive to delay it now, and hope that at some point the island will become stable enough to risk a rescue attempt. 8777. I think I've come up with a way to do the tremors. It will require my exclusive attention for at least a month or two, so it may be necessary to discontinue these journal entries for a while. 87713. Something truly miraculous has happened. Beyond all conceivable probability, someone has finally found my lost missed linking book and has freed me from this prison. I immediately realized that this could be the solution to my dilemma, and I believe my mysterious benefactor is willing to assist me. I'm still not sure it can work. The logistics of such a scheme are formidable, but the mere fact that it may now be possible for me to continue my repairs to Riven and yet proceed with my original intent to find Catherine has given me renewed hope. 87716 The last few days have left me little time to work out the remaining problems with sending someone else to Riven. It did occur to me, however, that if a way could be found to signal me once Gan had been captured, it would no longer be necessary to take a real linking book to Riven and risk the possibility of inadvertently releasing Gan. The deteriorated state of the gateway image makes the use of a visual signal impossible, but the picture remains a reliable indicator of Riven's condition nonetheless. By measuring and interpreting variations in the noise patterns, I am still able to observe basic changes that occur in the age, even though I cannot see them. The problem is that my instruments can only detect changes that occur on a fundamental level, and it seems unlikely that an individual could affect such an elementary change from within an age. The idea may be foolish. Still, there is a known weakness that may be worth investigating. An anomaly that appears as a rift between two separate systems, the starfisher. But how, or even if, this fact could be exploited, I cannot say. Sending someone to Riven also means that once I received the signal that they were ready to return, I would have to leave my writing in order to take a real linking book there myself. However, provided my father was safely out of the way, it should take very little time. After that, Assuming the island does not incur much damage in my absence, it should then be a relatively simple matter to hold it together long enough for Catherine to return to Riven and evacuate the remaining islanders. Predetermining a signal without knowing the topography of the island may prove to be impossible, but I'm afraid there can be only one answer to the question of whether or not I should send my friend to Riven with a way out. The potential for failure will be greatly diminished if the prison book is all that is taken there. I'm sure my father is expecting me to bring a linking book to Riven. May he not be disappointed. Well, that concludes Aetris' journal, and I will continue in the next video. See you then. Welcome back. Thanks to Aetris' journal, we now know that it was Gen, Aetris' father, an arrogant man with delusions of godhood, who created Riven. Over 30 years ago, Aetris trapped Gen on Riven, but now Gen has somehow managed to capture Catherine, Atrus's wife. We have been sent here to capture Gan and rescue Catherine, while Atrus continues writing in Riven's descriptive book to help keep the unstable age together. So we must do the following. Retrieve the prison book that was taken from us. Capture Gan in the prison book. Find and rescue Catherine. And find a way to signal Atrus so we can get off Riven. Sounds simple, doesn't it? 
Well, we'd better get started. We have a lot of work to do. Let's look around a little bit in the area where we arrived. This is the cage that we arrived in. On the outside it doesn't really look like a cage, it just look, looks like a protection built around the linking spot. And this is a normal thing for the Dunny to do, to build such a chamber around a linking spot. This is because Gen doesn't know why uh, that the, the gateway image in the Riven book is so distorted. He thinks that Atris can still see the linking sp spot through the gateway image. So if there was an obvious cage there, he would never be so foolish as to link there. With the cage disguised like this, Atris wouldn't know. Next to the cage is this giant dagger. There are several of these giant daggers in uh, in Riven. They were written into the age uh, by Catherine before Gen was trapped here a long time ago. Over here we have the lever that controls the cage, but it's stuck. This small dagger has been uh, jammed in there by the uh, guy who rescued us. Look, notice that the small dagger looks the same as the large dagger. Over here is some kind of telescope. Only different from a normal telescope, it appears to be looking down. It also appears to be looking at nothing at all at the moment. And that's because this hatch is shut. It doesn't look like it's been used recently with all this rust on it. And unfortunately, I cannot open it. I don't know the combination. I really don't know the combination. It's randomly generated every time you play, so I don't know what it is this time. Above the telescope we can see this giant dome. There's some controls for the telescope, but they don't appear to be doing anything. Pipe leading into the rock. And beyond there, a very, very deep chasm. So let's not go this way. We're currently standing on one of the five islands of Riven. This island is usually called Temple Island or Dome Island because of the giant dome that's on it. From here we can see one of the other islands. And there's these cables connecting the islands. The islands actually used to be closer together, but because of the uh, unstable nature of the age, they've been drifting further and further apart. The visuals in this game are fantastic. I absolutely... I, this is one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. Despite the low resolution and limited color graphics and things like that, it is just breathtaking. Over here is a room. Well, let's uh, take a look inside this room. This room has five sides. The number five is something that crops up a lot in uh, Riven. This is because the Dunny culture thinks uh, the number five is important and Gen ascribes it even more important and has integrated it into every facet of Rivenese uh, culture. This is also uh, the case because Riven is Gen's fifth age, as we saw in um, H's journal. The symbol on the floor here is the symbol of Gen. It is five pen tips surrounded by a circle, and in the middle is the Dunny number symbol five. Like I said, the guy has an obsession with five. The roof, we see some stars, and I think this is supposed to be a pen tip. This room is a worship room for Gen, and it's uh, centered around the whole idea of writing books, because this is like a pen tip, like I said. And the columns are tree trunks, which is the source of the paper, and the beetles sitting on the columns are the source of the ink. So everything in this room is about writing books. And these beetles are actually not just ornamental. You can open them up and look inside. We see here some religious representations. This one shows Gen with a halo around his head. No, he doesn't have any illusions of godhood. 
and he is writing in a book and from the tip of his pen there come people and fish and animals and the sky and plants so everything is created by his writing this shows that that God believes uh, that Gen believes he is a god and that he creates worlds by writing On the, in contrast, actually, what the, the Dani do is that they just link to existing worlds when they uh, write. There's some Dani writing on the wall here, but I don't know what it says. Um, okay. The second beetle shows God, which is again, the... Um, hanging in the sky with a book behind him and being worshipped by the villagers of Riven. This third beetle has a problem with its click spot. The, but when we look inside it, we see Gen casting someone into a pit. And what this represents is uh, Gen defeating Atreus and throwing him into the Starfisher. Well, that's not actually what happened. What happened, in truth, is that Atreus had destroyed all the linking books away from Riven. So that the only linking book left was the one he held, his mist book. So he intentionally jumped into the Starfisher and linked away from uh, Riven. And the linking book he used, the mist book, fell further into the Starfisher until, at some point, the player found it, starting the events of uh, Mist. Of course, Gen doesn't want his, uh, his followers to know that he's been trapped by Atreus, so his version of the story is that he defeated Atreus and exiled him from Riven, proving that he is a god. In this image, we see um, the guilds of Riven, Dunny is based on guilds, the Dunny Society, and Gen has recreated some of these guilds here on Riven. At the top we see Gen, and below that the five guild masters. We have the guild of builders, the guild of educators, the guild of maintainers, the guild of Tetris players, um, sorry, I mean uh, surveyors, and the guild of bookmakers. And the final beetle shows us the process of making books. We start out with trees that have been cut down, and these trees go into some machine which shreds the wood. And there's a pressure cooker which helps uh, separate the wood fibers, and then we can make paper and a book. And the book is being worshipped by some people, I guess these are the guild masters again. Not entirely sure what the flames are doing, if they're part of the bookmaking process or part of the, the process that Gen needs to power his books, which we'll see later. Okay, those are all the beetles. This uh, room has two exits, and one of them leads to a bridge which leads to the giant dome we saw earlier. Unfortunately, there's a gate in front of this uh, in front of this door, so we can't actually go anywhere. We're out of time, so I'll continue in the next video. Goodbye. In the previous video, we were done exploring the inside of this room. One thing I skipped over was this button on the outside of the room. I'm gonna skip over it again for the moment and go downstairs here. Admire the view. There's a gate here, and unfortunately it's locked. But look at this. There's another one of these small daggers below it. Let's take a closer look. Uh-huh, how sneaky! You can actually just go under the gate. The dagger was actually placed there by the game designer specifically so that people would know to click under the gate, otherwise nobody tried that. Now we're inside a cave and it leads to a wall. 
and if we look through here, we're actually looking into the room. That's interesting to know. So how about that button? What happens when we push the button? All kinds of machinery starts working and look at that! The room is rotating. Yes, this is the rotating room puzzle. The first major puzzle in Riven. It's a puzzle that has been known to drive some people crazy. It's actually not that difficult in my opinion, at least not compared to some of the other puzzles in the game. We look inside now, we see that the other door is now in front of another gate, which we also cannot get through, because it's closed. So let's rotate it once more. We look inside. Now the um, first door is in front of the original gate and we cannot see the second door. So I have a uh, suspicion where the second door is. Let's see if that's true. And it is. We can now enter the room from the cave. But it's not very helpful because, well, it, we just stuck around stuck in front of this gate again. So let's go back. And rotate the room again. The rotating room was apparently a real nightmare for the game designers because of all the different states it has, with the gates opened and closed, and bridges raised or not. And uh, they had to render images for all these different states, which must have been a logistical nightmare. Okay, now we can enter the room from this side again, and get out through another side, except that there's another closed gate there. So that doesn't help us. Let's continue rotating that room. Who needs monsters to fight in a game? We've got rooms to rotate. It's much more exciting. Okay, now we cannot see either door. But if we count it right, one of them is once again in this cave. And we did, in fact, count right. The other door now leads to another cave, which we hadn't seen before. And inside that cave we find a valve, and there's the sound of steam. If we look up, we can see steam coming from there. And this sign here, which looks a lot like the telescope. So let's turn this valve. And we'll uh, look at the result of that action a little bit later. For now, let's continue with the rotating room. In this cave we find two more switches, a switch on the left here and a button here. If we push that, it will continue to rotate the room. So now we can't get out of this cave, so let's rotate the room a little bit further. It's interesting how rotate room seems to take less time when you can hear it but not see it. Okay, now we can get back in, and the second door leads to this uh, gate again. So, seems like we can't do anything with that, but we haven't tried this uh, switch here yet. So, let's throw the switch, and it opens the gate. Who would have thought? Well, I would, but I've played this game before. 
So now we can get through here, but unfortunately all we reach is another closed door. Or do we? In fact, we reach more switches. So let's uh, place this switch. Okay, we can hear some gate uh, being opened, but we cannot see it. We can continue with our favorite hobby, which is uh, room rotating. I'm just trying to get all the room rotating business over with uh, in uh, one video. Okay, now we can get back out to the outside. Now, while we're outside, before we continue, let's do one more thing. Let's see if our actions with the steam valve have had any effect on the telescope. We can definitely hear the sound of steam now. And indeed, we can now lower and raise the telescope using these controls, but since the hatch is still closed, it doesn't really do anything, but we will need this at the end of the game. Yes, all the way at the end. So let's turn our attention back to this rotating room. And I need to rotate it twice more, and then we'll be done. Last time. If you've been paying attention to the positions of the room, you should know that doing this has now put the room back into its original position. Except that this time, the gate is opened. So now we can cross the bridge and go into the giant dome. We look to the left here, we see the place where we arrived on uh, Riven. See, look to the right, there's another button here, so we can also rotate the room from this side, but we don't need to do that. Going into the dome, we see a lake of some sorts uh, inside it, and some sort of machinery in the middle. So at this point, it's not really clear yet what's going on. If we look behind us here, there's a lever. But it doesn't look like it does anything. Ahead, we find a diagram. And these are the Tetris pieces that we saw in one of the uh, religious images in the rotating room. Obviously, they're not really Tetris pieces. For one thing, they don't all have four blocks. But um, what they do stand for, we don't know yet. The bridge on this side is unfortunately opened. And it can only be closed from the other side, so we can't go this way. We can go the other way, but we'll do that in the next video. See you next time. And welcome back to Let's Play Riven. We're currently inside the giant golden dome that Gen built on this island uh, here. We don't know what purpose this dome so, uh, uh, serves. And we won't be finding out anytime soon. But let's explore it for the time being. Go down this walkway. What could this stuff in the middle be for? We go outside here. From here, actually, we can see another island. What island could that be? Apparently, it's connected by a walkway, but we can't get there yet. Over here is another steam vent. Riven is apparently highly volcanic, 
what with all these steam vents. And it seems that this, uh, this valve operates a bridge of some sort, according to this icon. And if I have to guess, it's probably this bridge over here. Now let's turn it on. Well, nothing happened, but anyway, let's continue. Here we find what looks like a sort of uh, elevator thing. And if we look up, you see that the uh, path up there is uh, broken. So apparently the elevator is down, but there's nothing we can do. There's no button. So let's just continue into this cave. And it leads to another valve with another uh, bridge symbol. This seems to lead to this bridge. Well, let's uh, throw the switch. And there goes the bridge. Not a lot of people know that you can actually see the bridge rise from this angle. What you need to do to see it is uh, turn that switch uh, after the bridge, which we saw when coming into the dome. If you haven't done that, the bridge will stay down when you're here. Okay, well this is a dead end, so let's go back. Doesn't appear to be anywhere else we can go from here. And the bridge is raised, so we can't get out. Well, maybe raising the bridge is useful at some point later in the game. Right now we don't have another way out of the dome, so we're going to need to have this bridge lowered. Just look at that attention to detail with the swinging when it came down. One thing you should note here is that if you're looking at the dome, there appears to be an upper level here, so if the bridge is raised, it might be possible to get onto that upper level. But in order to do that, we do need to have an alternative way to get out of the uh, dome, which currently we don't have. So that's all we can do with the dome for now. So now we can go this way. From here we can also get a nice view of this huge dome. Gen is many things. He's definitely not a minimalist from the way he builds things. Again we go into some cave and let's see what's behind this door. chair. Which has a cage around it which opens up automatically as we approach it. Well, let's sit in the chair. Okay, and this button closes the cage. On this lever appears to do something, but exactly what is not that clear. It doesn't seem that we can actually do anything with this. Okay, there's two viewers here. One shows the inside of what appears to be a hole. There's a lever here, so let's throw that. And it opens a door, which is good. Doors are always better open than closed, especially in adventure games. The second viewer shows us, well, it's not really clear what this is. Maybe we'll see it later. You hear the cage being closed behind us again. I don't want to go that way, I want to go this way. And another door, so let's see what's behind door number two, Alex.
This is a temple. More sign, more proof that Gan considers himself a god. This temple here is to worship him. The room we saw earlier with the chair is actually a transmitter. When Gan sits in that chair, he can project his head here and speak to the people in the temple. It must seem very imposing. It's Gan's symbol behind it with the sun behind it. It's really impressive sight. To the sides, we see these things. Let's see if I can get a better look at them. I think this is the best look, best angle we can get. Uh, these things are giant fish, basically. They're called warks. One of the ways that Gen uses to keep the Rivenese people under control is with these uh, fish. They're predatory fish, sort of like sharks, I guess. They uh, eat people, and Gen uses them as uh, punishment. They're generally feared and revered by the Rivenese people. You can see here that the Rivenese people offer fruit and flowers to the statues of the Wark. On the other side we see the same thing. Well, this was the door we just opened from the chair room. And here we see the thing we could just see from the second viewer in the chair room. It appears to be a, a station, like a train station or something, but there's no train. You can see that this uh, uses these cables we saw earlier. Well, let's push the button. Now, I don't know how visible this will be in the recorded video, but you can actually see the car coming in the background and shortly it will arrive here. Originally, the islands of Riven were connected by uh, by bridges, but as the islands kept drifting apart, this was very uh, cumbersome and maintenance intensive. So again, builds these maglev cars. The idea here is that these cables can stretch and can therefore adjust when the islands drift further apart and only need to be replaced when they reach their maximum length. So, let's take the train. I love public transportation. And let's go. If you play this game for real without knowing what you need to do without a solution or a hint guide or whatever, then you'll be taking these things a lot going from island to island. Quite frankly, you'll be seeing this motion in your dreams. I know I did this time I played this game. Because I'm following pretty much the optimal path through the game. The, uh, we won't be taking them that much, actually. And that takes us to the second island which we will explore next time. See you then. Welcome back. Last time we took the Maglav car to a second island. This second island is called Village Island. Some people also call it Jungle Island, but I prefer to call it Village Island. So, let's explore this island. Although fairly common now, this kind of realistic texture look was really something that was not seen in computer graphics in video games before this this game. Here we find in the rock wall some sort of a wooden ball with an eye on it. You click that, it moves. And there's two things we want to uh, note about that. One thing is this symbol, which is on the back, and the sound it makes. Sort of a chirping sound. Now, this um, 
ball puzzle actually has two possible solutions uh, or two ways to get to the solution. The most common one is by sound association. That's the one everyone knows. But there's actually a much easier solution, which works for uh, four out of the five balls. That is, if you're in the cave here and look back, you see that the cave entrance sort of looks like a frog. And the eyeball appears exactly where the eye of the frog would be. So, we could uh, assume then that whatever animal should be associated with this ball is a frog. And that whatever makes that sound we just heard is also a frog. Of course, at this point we haven't actually seen the symbols we're looking for yet. If you're playing this game for the first time, you'd probably not notice this, at, uh, this yet. In fact, I never noticed uh, the fact that you could see these shapes with the with the eyeballs. I had to read about that much later. There's one which you have to solve with the shape. So obviously I, uh, I use it there, but I didn't know you could do it with the other ones as well. It's fantastic graphics here. I really like the look of uh, Village Island. Over there we see the Dome Island. You can hear the creaking of the wooden bridge. Fantastic attention to detail that this, uh, this game has. It's probably not that visible, but you can actually see uh, insects flying around in here as well. Another island we can see back there, which we'll undoubtedly visit at some point. There's another insect going down the bottom of the screen. Okay, so what is this? It appears to be a tree garden, except all the trees have been cut down. And why could that be? Of course, if you've been paying attention, you know the answer to that. Ken is making books. And what do you need to make books? Paper. And what do you need to make paper? Trees. So these trees have been cut down to make paper. Here we see uh, an axe. This kind of axe, you really wouldn't be able to cut a tree that's this big uh, down with, with just an axe. But if you look closely, it's hard to see even in the game, so it's going to be pretty impossible to see on YouTube, I guess. The, um, there's a handle lying here, and uh, sort of a wire going across the top of the tree. I guess that's a saw they use to saw down these big trees. Well, there's a gate here, and on the gate is a beetle. These are the beetles that give the ink. Oh, and it flies away. The sound of the beetle is an important clue. If you didn't hear it, it's not that uh, that much of a problem because. These beetles are really plentiful, they're constantly flying around here in this uh, garden. Well, if we look here, uh, we see here the trees are still there, but they've all been stripped of their bark. So apparently Gen, for some reason, didn't want to cut down all these trees. But he still used their bark for, the, for making paper. We could see that in one of the religious is in the rotating room but earlier. We saw this tree with its bark stripped off and paper falling off of it. Apparently it's not really healthy for these trees because look at these leaves, they're all brown. Over there we see what looks like the handle of a big dagger. Again, you can hear some insects. There goes another one of those beetles. I always get lost here, <laughs> so excuse me. The, um, I can never f remember how to get to the dagger. Oh wait, it's over here, right. Um, okay. 
So if we go down here, we get to the base of this giant dagger. There's another one of these eyeballs. Again, make note of the symbol and the sound. And this is the only eyeball where you cannot see a shape near it. Apparently the designers felt that it would be too easy if the if you could see the shape with all of them. And they were wrong. Because this puzzle is really, really hard. But it is sort of nice in a way, because there's one eyeball that you have to solve with sound, which is this one, and one eyeball that you have to solve with uh, the image. Okay, let's move on. There's actually... Oh, there was another beetle. Here we see a chasm with apparently lava down. It can't be good for an island to have a lava pit right in the middle of it. It's another sign of the instability of Riven. Here we see these flowers that were uh, part of the work offering in the temple. Okay, well that's enough of that. Let's go this way. Mushrooms. I think the these look like fireflies or something. Now you can say a lot about this game, but not that you don't get enough chances to hear the beetle. Okay, we go down here. And we see it looks like a big wooden wark. Now I've already told you that the villagers fear uh, the wark. And they worship it. So obviously... Having a big statue of a wark here would be a really good way to ensure that the villagers wouldn't come near it. So what better place to hide something like a secret door? I mean, even if a villager would by accident discover that you could open this, there is no way they'd ever go into the mouth of a wark, even if it's made of wood. But we don't have any of those superstitions, so we can do it. Now, we're in sort of uh, inside sort of an elevator. This lever controls the elevator. And this button would suggest the presence of a maglev, and there is actually a maglev, and it's um, down. If you go down with the elevator, you can go both up and down. But we're not going to use that maglev just yet. So we'll go up. Okay, second floor. And we'll investigate the second floor in the next video. Welcome back. We're now exploring the second level of the village island jungle garden thingy. And here we can see more of the brown leaves indicating that these trees are dying. I get some nice view out to see. You can also see in the corner here what appears to be a rotating dome. There's actually a dome like this on every island. And we could actually see the one uh, on Dome Island, the, the big Dome Island. But I unfortunately missed uh, it and didn't point it out. We couldn't get to it yet anyway. We'll see it later. Well, let's take a look at uh, this dome. Well, it's a dome and it's rotating. There's a whole bunch of symbols on the side and one of these symbols appears to have a different color. It's unfortunately almost impossible to see what symbol it is because the dome is rotating so quickly. If we go over here, there's a viewer. 
which shows us the symbols more clearly, but it's still hard to see what the correct symbol is. But if we push this a couple of times, there's the symbol. Did you get it? You should uh, write down those symbols, they're very important. So besides showing us the symbol, this also had the effect of opening the dome. I can get inside it. It looks like there's a book under here and some sort of combination lock. But much like the code for the telescope, this is also randomly generated, so I have no idea what it is. Oh, that wasn't it. I didn't happen to guess it. So it seems that Gen is actually making books. Well, that would have been pretty obvious from the cut down trees and everything. But if he's taking this much trouble to protect it, it seems that he has working linking books, something that uh, Atris didn't think was possible. There's this uh, volcanic chasm again. So, let's climb up the ladder, or stairs actually, and ooh, we've been spotted. Villagers are very afraid of attacks because of a group of rebels uh, that has been operating here. The guy who initially uh, rescued us from the cage when we came to Riven was one of these rebels. Now the villagers know we're coming. There's the uh, lookout post. And it seems like Gen built something here. What could it be? There is a chair inside it. it seems that Gen is uh, allergic to chairs that don't have levers and knobs uh, sitting around it. We can raise this chair and get a nice view of a village. Looks like a nice little village with uh, nice little round huts. Must be tiny though. And we can look down at a lake. And uh, if you look closely, there's something really weird going on with this lake. See, there's some holes in the water. The water normally doesn't uh, behave that way. At least not the water that I uh, know. But water on Riven apparently does. We can see also that there's some kind of tracks below the water. Well, at this point we don't know yet what they're used for. And this thing, which uh, this chair appears to be looking down onto directly. It's not that uh, obvious from here, but this is actually a, a sort of gallows. The uh, statues on the top are statues of works. What happens here is that to punish transgressors of the law, Gen will hang them from a bar at the top of these gallows and lower them down, and then a wark will come and eat them. I don't know exactly how warks are supposed to come into this uh, little lake. I suppose that the lake is connected to the sea via the underground or something. And from here, Gen can control their fate. If he closes the, the uh, gate at the bottom, the villagers are saved. Sort of like the uh, Roman emperors deciding the fate of a gladiator. Well, we're going to leave that closed. So, let's lower this chair back down.
and we'll take the elevator back. I'll remind you again, you can actually go further down with this elevator and get to another MacLav car and go to another island, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go back out of the mouth of the warp. And go back this way. Ooh, a little girl. Watch out, little girl. Where's she going? Oh, she's gone. Little girl's a fast runner. I think sometime in the future she may have a career as an athlete in front, in front of her. Well, we've seen there's a village on this island. Let's see if we can get to it. It is actually possible to have the lookout notice you when you come through this way, but since the lookout already saw us coming uh, to the um, to the chair, he doesn't uh, warn us warn about us again. Well, really hard to notice. There's actually a mural here, which um, I mean it's barely visible in the game. I, I doubt you can actually see this in the video. But what it shows is Gen, with a crude version of Gen symbol above it, feeding two villagers to two hungry works. Again, an, uh, an indication of just how cruel uh, Gen is. Or right, here we can look out to see. How oh, nice. And we come to the village. Oh, and in the top left corner there you can just see some villagers running away. I mean, the lookout only warned you five minutes ago, so why uh, wait this long to run away? There's still a little girl there playing on the docks who doesn't realize the danger. Probably the girl we saw before. Her mother has to come and get her. Of course we're not actually dangerous, but they don't know that. And it looks like we're out of time, so I'll see you next time. Welcome once again to Let's Play Riven. Oh, we're about to f uh, visit the natives of Riven, who live in this village, in these nice little huts. They have a nice lake, which I suppose is a saltwater lake if the, uh, the works can get to it. There's that uh, war gallows that we saw from above. And in the middle of the uh, lake is a spyglass of some sort. So we might be being watched by Gen as we speak. And here is what appears to be an opening in the water, one of these holes we saw from above. There's definitely something really weird going on with the water. It appears to be a landing or a boarding point for something, but whatever it is, it's not here. Another thing we can see from here is that there's something floating in the water uh, right there. It might be hard to see in the video. It's attached to um, a cable, so it's apparently anchored to the bottom. This is one of those eyeballs. I never noticed this, actually. I knew it was supposed to be in the water, uh, because you find out another way later. And I know you can get a look at it from uh, in a certain way, which we'll find out much later as well. But I never actually saw it floating in the water in the village until I was doing my practice run for this Let's Play video. That's the first time I actually saw that. So there's another ball. At the moment, we can't get to it. And so we cannot hear the sound it makes. Or the number that's uh, the symbol that's on it. I'm not supposed to know yet that they're numbers, damn it. <laughs> okay. Let's continue into the village. Oh, that's going the wrong way. Um, let's go into this village here.
That's an interesting looking village. You can see there's some fish uh, hanging there. And one of these huts, like a knock. Doesn't look like anyone's home. Or is there? Well, we know that number five is important on Riven, so let's knock five times. And indeed, someone's home. Hello? Are you interested in a subscription to the New York Times? I guess not. Well, let's uh, move on. Over here we can see those fish hanging. Obviously, um, considering the number, the limited amount of land available on Riven, the villagers of, uh, of Riven are not farmers. No, they're mostly fishermen and hunters. They catch these fish for food. And there's another animal they use for food, which uh, are the sunners, which we'll see shortly. There's an oven here cooking some meat. This is probably sunner meat. Must smell nice. Fortunately, games with smell vision have not yet been invented. Over here we see some sort of altar or shrine. I think these are drums of some kind. And uh, an altar with image of a wark below it. They're probably offer uh, fruit and stuff to the uh, to the work here similar as in the temple now what do we have here a giant iron bowl on wheels you can go inside it and get a look at the at the uh, village from inside it None of these controls actually appear to be doing anything. Well, that isn't very useful. Surely this thing must serve some purpose. Now, if you look at it, what does it remind you of? Well, it reminds me of a bathyscaphe, which uh, is a device used for traveling underwater. Okay, bathyscaphes don't usually have wheels, but this one does. So, I'm going to guess, and it's not a fair guess because I've played this game before, but anyway, I'm going to guess that this thing is used to travel underneath the lake. We could see tracks from uh, the viewpoint in, on the chair. Well, let's use this lever. Um, it lowers the uh, train thingy. You can see that it's um, below there. I suppose that this uh, landing extends after it's been lowered, because otherwise how would it get through it? And now it's sitting there in one of those mysterious holes in the water. But we cannot get to it. Unfortunately, this is a dead end. There's nothing we can do in this village beyond what we've already done. So let's go back out through the cave. Back through here. Well, if you remember, we came to a fork in the road earlier. Here, if we go left, that leads back to the maglev. But we're gonna go down. I see there's some animals over there. Let's be very quiet. Maybe they won't hear us. These are the sunners. And they are very, very shy creatures because they're being hunted by the villagers. We have to Sneak up on them. Hey. Hey. 
Does that sound familiar to you? It does, doesn't it? It's the sound we heard on the second. On the second ball. It's the sound we heard on the second ball, yes. I was interrupted by this uh, thing. Will you keep do uh, stop doing that? Yes, we've hurt you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move before this happens again. On this side is another ball. Another symbol on it. And another sound. Well, if we look at it from this angle, don't you think that this sort of looks like one of those big fish, the warks? No, I don't think it looks like that either, but apparently it's supposed to look like it. And the sound we just heard, heard is the sound of the wark. No, well, apparently the sunners have decided to leave. But we already heard them, so we know the sound they make, which is all we really needed with them. Just looking a little bit at the gorgeous scenery around here. Okay, well, we're uh, beginning to run out of time again, so we will move on in the next video. Hello, everyone. We were just about to continue our exploration of Village Island. If we go through these caves here, we come to the other side of the village. There's another lookout here, but there's no need for him to uh, warn anyone because, well, they already know we're here. That's uh, the oven we saw and the altar, the spyglass. Originally, actually, it was the intention of the game designers to have this uh, spyglass follow you around as you were walking around, but it turned out to be a logistical nightmare to have that thing move in every shot that you could see it, and uh, they didn't do it. Okay, over here is another eyeball. Well, that sound should be familiar already. It is the sound of the beetle. And if we turn this uh, valve here, the pool floods with water. And you can see that it looks like a beetle with, again, the eyeball and the position where the eye should be for the beetle. This is the only one of the images that I actually found by myself. I didn't have to read about afterwards. because This is obviously a beetle, but I never uh, noticed the frog cave entrance or the wark stone formation with the others. So now we have uh, all five balls. We've seen uh, them. There are only five of them. Obviously, because, well, this is Riven and everything comes in fives. The four of them we've actually been able to get to, and one of them is in the water. We've heard the sound of four of them. We've seen an image of three of them. And we're going to need to uh, associate them with uh, animals, all of them. And we already know four of them, because we've heard the sound of the one that doesn't have an image, and we've seen the images of the others. So we're well on our way to solving this puzzle, even if we don't actually know what we're doing it for yet. Okay, let's go down. And here we come to the train. Underwater train. Oh, 
Okay. Now it's underwater. We can see that this thing is now full. And these controls work. I'm actually going to go in the other direction first. Oh, it's around. Now this is something that would normally take you quite a bit of time. Just to figure out where you can go and where all the tracks lead. But I already know that, so I'm just going to take the most efficient route. Now here we are at a uh, fork in the tracks, and this lever controls what direction we'll, we'll go. And I actually want to go right, so that's good. see more evidence here of these holes in the water and it's really bizarre what could be doing that. Okay. Now we can get out and we're on the opposite side of the village now. On the opposite side of the lake from the village is what I actually meant to say. The, and there's not actually anything we can do with the village from here. We can go up here. There's some levers over there. Two of them are up, three of them are down. And if we look outside we can see um, the village and we see the uh, work gallows. We see several of these landings which uh, are used by this train. We see four of them. We know there's a fifth one where we're currently parked. And only one of them is extended, which is the one we started from. And the one we just used to get here is also extended. So that leaves three of them that are not extended. So these levers apparently control these uh, platforms. So let's move the other three up. We look outside now, you see that these are now all extended. Well, you can't actually see this one very well, but it's there and it's extended. So let's go back down. and go back in here. Turn around. And onward we go. Well, the next stop we want to make is the school. Because it is time for us to do some learning. And I have no school is to the left here, so let's choose the left fork and continue. I think it's really nice that you have all these different ways of transportation in the game. It's a variety up. You're not just walking around, you're taking underwater trains and maglev cars and things of that nature. And here we are at the school used by the Guild of Educators, which we saw earlier. Here Gen teaches his uh, teaches the children of Riven basically to worship him. Some interesting things to look at uh, inside the school. This school board has some uh, writing on it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it says. It's something along the lines of, again, uh, created us, Gen is our god. 
the gen something something. <laughs> I know the first word is gen, and I know the first two sentences, but I've forgotten the third one. Well, you can find it on the internet if you're really interested. So here, where people are taught to read uh, and write the Dunny language and to worship Gen. This is a sort of projector, similar to the one we saw in the temple. Where Gen speaks to his uh, loyal subjects, the children. Well, at least he looks uh, cheerful. Take note, this isn't the first time we actually see Gen. Well, wasn't that interesting. Second board is empty. These nice little lamps here with works, uh, work drawings on them. And all around the schoolroom we see these letters. The Dunny letters. I can't actually write, uh, read Dunny. There are some people who can, I can't. It feels like a real schoolroom. There's some fruit here. And somebody's been uh, practicing writing over here. Well, one of the words he spelled wrong is actually Gen, which is a bit of a stupid thing to do to get the name of your god wrong. Okay, and it looks like we're out of time again, so see you next time. Welcome back. We're still in the school here. We've already seen how. Uh, they teach children to read and write the Dunny alphabet. There's something else that schools usually teach, and that is numbers, counting, mathematics, whatever. One of the ways they teach that here is through this little game, which is a, actually a really macabre game if you think about it. There's these two um, guys, and there's this wark down here waiting to eat them. And we see a symbol here, and that symbol should look familiar, because we've seen it on one of the eyeballs. So the symbols on the eyeballs are actually numbers, and using this game we can learn the numbers 1 through 10. Let's try and do that. And we see that it gives a number, and the guy dropped. And the guy dropped only one time, so this number is 1. One, two, three. So this symbol apparently is the number three. One, two, three, four. Oh, that symbol is the number four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that symbol is the number six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, actually. That no, uh, symbol is uh, eight. Normally you would have to play this game until you get all the numbers, so he just lost because he got ten, and I think he has less than ten uh, left. Oh, he's lucky. Okay, let's see what happens on this side. He gets two. And now he's dead. Well, normally you would play this game until you get all the numbers, but I already know the numbers and playing this game again and again isn't all that interesting. So, Instead, I'm just going to give you all the numbers. Here they are. These are all the Dunny numbers, 1 through 10. Now, we've seen these numbers on the uh, 
the fish. No, not on the fish. We've seen these numbers on the eyeballs. I'm just confused because the game has fish in it. Okay, let's get back into our underwater train. I want to have an underwater train. Like the trains are boring. My daily commute would be much more interesting if I could take an underwater train instead of regular ones. train thing just looks like something straight out of Disney, uh, doesn't it? Just expect to find it a Disney theme park or something. Maybe it's SeaWorld. Like that. But no, it is one of the end's contraptions. Okay. Let's see where we are now. Yeah, we are at the Wark Gallows. Take note that from here you can actually once again see the fifth eyeball sitting in the water. Wark Gallows are closed because, well, we closed them. There's a lever here. You can push it. Or pull it, actually. And down comes the bar that would normally lower prisoners to their untimely demise. And because we closed it, we can actually get onto the bar and ride it back to the top. So now we've got maglev cars, underwater trains, and gallows, basically, as uh, modes of transportation. And here we are at the top of the gallows. That's nice. What do we have here? It seems to be a prison, and there is a prisoner inside. Well, he's not very talkative, apparently. I wonder if this is the guy who uh, rescued us, or someone else. I honestly don't know. Well, he doesn't seem to be interested uh, in talking to us. Let's see what else we have. It's some sort of a wheel. And if we turn that... It opens the prison. So I guess that guy would be very, uh, very uh, glad that we came now to rescue him. He's gone! How can that be? Tis a conundrum! Apparently there's another way out of this prison. See if we can find it. And I just found it. it wasn't that hard, considering I already knew where it was. It's a trap door. Or a secret door, actually. Let's go through the secret door and into this cave, which is really, really dark, so no idea where we're going. That leads us to the sea. Well, that's not very helpful. What is this? It's a light. And we can see there are actually more of these lights all along the cave. And we can turn more of them on, so we can actually see where we're going now. And it turns out there's a door in this uh, cave. 
And if we open that, or close it, depending on how you look at it, we can get into this other passage. Going through here takes us to a circular room with all these kinds of stone tablets or some sort with symbols of animals on them. In front is some kind of a trap door. I don't know. What do I have with trap doors? There's no trap doors here. The, it's some sort of a opening with the dagger symbol on it. And it's not that visible actually, but it's there's this strange vertical lake over it. More evidence of Riven's strange water behavior. Now these stones have animal symbols on them. And we've been uh, seeing these eyeballs with uh, numbers on them. And which make sounds and have animals associated with them. So it would seem reasonable to assume that we need to choose five of these stones in the order of the numbers on the um, on the eyeballs. Now we already know four of them. We know that um, eyeball number two, with the, the one with the number two on it, is the beetle. We know that the eyeball with the number three on it is the frog. They're actually called itrams. We know that the uh, eyeball with the number four on it is the uh, sunner. And the last one with number five is the wark. Unfortunately, we're still missing one, which is the one that's in the water. Of course, we could try and guess it, but uh, there's actually a proper way to solve this puzzle, and that's what we're going to do. Because we're out of time now, we're going to continue from here next time. Welcome back. Now, before we leave this room with all the stones in it, I just want to show you one more thing. You can actually... Uh, click on the stones and see the symbols in more detail. If you click on them again, the stone pushes down. So obviously we need to push five of these stones in the correct order, but like I told you last time, we know only four of the symbols currently. There's a lot of them to choose from, so guessing the fifth symbol isn't really an option. So we'll leave that for what it is. At least now we know what the eyeballs are four. We need to find out the fifth animal symbol. Now, in order to do that, we will either need to find the sound or the image of the fifth eyeball, which is in the water. So we can't get to it, so we can't hear the sound. We can't really look at it from the correct angle either. At least not from this island. This is a mystery that will have to be solved later. But at least, now we know what we're looking for. Go back down here, we can lower this ladder. And get back to this side. Well, we've done everything we can on uh, Village Island. So it is time to leave. There's actually three ways of Village Island. We can either go back with the maglev we uh, we used to get here, go back to Dome Island. Well, we don't want to do that. We can take the maglev that's at the bottom of the Wark elevator that I pointed out earlier. We're not going to do that either. Now We are going this way. And here we can see what looks like a minecart of some sort. And we pull this lever take the minecart down. Well, let's hope this uh, track is a bit safer than the one in Temple of Doom. Fourth mode of, mode of transportation, by the way, minecarts. Not actually a minecart. What else to call it? They were underwater. Apparently whatever these rings are doing, they're keeping the water away. It's more of a strange behavior. Water in the river doesn't make sense. Mm 
And we're back out the water, going to the third island of Riven. This island is usually called Crater Island. Sometimes also called Laboratory Island. Or Bookmaking Island. These islands don't really have official names, so fans come up with their own names. Some names are more prevalent than others. And we have reached the end of the line. Please make sure you have all your belongings before leaving the train. There we are. So what is the purpose of this little car, one wonders. Well, apparently whatever's in the car gets deposited into this thing. We can see there's a huge pile of uh, shredded wood next to it. So this is part of the bookmaking process that we saw earlier in one of the uh, images in the rotating room. This machine shreds wood. The trees are chopped down on the village island, put into the mining car, then taken here and thrown into this machine, shredded. Oh, if I turn this here lever, we can once again use steam power to activate um, okay, I've lost the... I'm having some trouble getting in here, sorry. Um, okay, there we are. Now that I've... Come on. There we go. Turn on this machine. That doesn't actually serve any purpose, but, well... It's a nice intention to detail that you can actually do that. Let's see how Gan makes books. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is with this thing. And we're going to need to give it power too, so let's now move the steam valve so that it redirects the power over there. Let's look at this. Seems there's water inside. It seems it's boiling. Now this is the pressure cooker that uh, again uses as part of the paper making process. Because the water is boiling, this thing indicates here that the temperature is very high. And we cannot actually get in. So let's see if we can do something about that. Turn this here uh, handle, and water stops boiling. And now we can get into the room. But, well, there's water in it. can't really do anything. There's two more things that we need to do before we can actually get anywhere. That is, we need to get rid of the water, which we do by turning this wheel. Secondly, we need to raise the floor, which is done by this lever, but the lever doesn't work right now because the floor doesn't have power. We need to switch this, and now we can raise the floor. Okay. Before we move on, I want to explore around here a little bit more. Because you can actually go behind here, across this pipe. 
There's a ladder, but unfortunately this hatch here is closed. So we can't go there. So we'll have to find another way out. Before we do, I'm going to switch this back to its original position because we'll need that later and I don't want to have to come back here. Well, now let's go into the water boiler. And because the floor is raised we can now get to this ladder and because the water is gone we can go down. The water apparently has been evacuated through this really dark drainage tunnel. Must have been under a lot of pressure to get up uh, this steep incline. And it comes out here. Nice view, but we didn't come here for the view. We came here to uh, find our way around the island. Seems like not all of the water managed to make it all the way to sea. Some of it is uh, still there. Okay, let's see where else we can go. We can go up here. And we end up at this balcony looking out at the lake. Notice how blue this lake is. I think it's because it's a volcanic lake. We can open this. Now we can get down that ladder we found er earlier. It would be nice uh, if we needed to get back there, but we don't. So I've already done everything we needed to do over there. So next time we will investigate the inside of this here building. Hello again. We're still on Crater Island and trying to find out where we need to go here. And we just made our way up here through the drainage pipe of the water boiler. And we can get through these doors. We go inside. What is this? He wonders aloud. Open it. You can take one of these, I don't know, seeds or something. Put it in there. And you just needed to lower it. That's why I needed to... Uh, switch the steam power back before going here, because if I hadn't done that, the lever wouldn't have worked. Well, I don't really know what that's for, but uh, let's leave it there. Wait for a second. There's a fan here. Important to notice. But it appears to be a dead end. Is there anything else we can do here? Well, turns out, if we close the doors... we can actually get to other passageways. And this one leads to another one of those rotating domes. Once again, one of the symbols is in yellow, but we can't see it properly. It looks like there's a hole here. Must be one of those viewers nearby. Where is it? Well, I'll apply the same trick as before. Close the door. Which gives us access to this passage. And we can see the viewer. Now, you actually need to push it exactly when the yellow symbol is there to stop it. But I just push it a bunch of times in succession. Work. So we know now, now know this symbol, which is just a circle with a vertical line in it. And we've opened this dome. Okay, well we're not really interested in the inside of the dome, because it's the same as the uh, other dome. And we can't actually do anything with it yet. Well, let's go back up here. Uh, enjoy the view here. Okay, so what's this? Looks like a 
building. But unfortunately, the door is locked. Let's see if we can go any further. And that should be a familiar sight. It is Dome Island. And unfortunately, the bridge is up and we can't climb it or anything, so looks like we're stuck. That's the path back to uh, the Crater Island. Over there is Village Island. You look down here, we can see the steam uh, valve we used. And if you remember correctly, that steam valve had a bridge symbol. So it's probably for this bridge. And if we turn this lever, you can lower the bridge. So aren't you happy now that we turned that valve? Because otherwise we'd have to go all the way back. We can now enter the dome from the other side. One thing we can do is extend the bridge. Which uh, takes us back here. We can get back to the rotating room. I'm just going to raise uh, this bridge now. Which will save me some time later, because I don't have to come back here to do that. I can raise the bridge now, uh, because now I have another way out of here. Which is through here. Yeah. Well, there's still this uh, side, which we haven't uh, been to yet. Hmm. There's a button. Let's see if it can solve the um, uh, the broken path. And it does. Can we look down here? No. There's one another one of those rotating domes. This is the one I said we could have seen earlier, but I missed. Okay, if we walk here, we come to a closed door. Which we can open. And this looks familiar, doesn't it? It's once again one of the entrances of the rotating room, the one that led to a closed door, and now it's open. But we want to get to that dome, because we want to know the symbol. How do we do that? Well, this uh, elevator that we raised to get uh, across here, we've seen that before. We've seen it uh, from below. Let's go back there, which is actually this way. So around, and it's here. And if we push that now, we go down. But it wasn't there before. Raising the platform to the top as reveal to the button. So now we can go down here. It's actually possible to uh, push the button here, raise the elevator while we're not on it. Maybe there's a really important secret compartment below it, and the answer is no, there's just a drain. That's a little touch of realism that there's a drain. Not everything needs to lead to a secret compartment, but that's not how worlds are in real life. So, as Riven is supposed to be as real as possible, there should be some things that don't lead to secret uh, compartments, but just to mundane stuff like drainage. And here is 
the dome where they'll take the go. Once again, we will use the viewfinder to stop it. And it's a circle with a dot. Are you keeping track of all this? Don't worry, you don't need to, because I am. So far, we have um, symbols for Village Island, which was uh, a circle with what looked like a bit of an eye or something in the middle. We have Crater Island, which is a circle with a, a vertical line. And now Dome Island, which is a circle with a dot in the middle. If you've been paying attention, you might get, be able to guess how many of these domes there are in total. Yes, indeed, there are five. Okay, let's go back. After this brief detour to uh, Dome Island, we really need to get back to Crater Island and work on finding a way to get into that laboratory. So, I'm going to end this video here, and next time we'll try and break into uh, the building. Hello again. After a brief trip to Dome Island to get the symbol of its rotating dome, we uh, are going to go back to Crater Island. And our goal now will be to get into this building. Fortunately, we can't go through the door because it is locked. There's a lever here, which I passed by last time. Let's switch it. And something just turned off, but what? Well, let's go back here. Now we can see we stopped this fan from rotating. But before we uh, do anything with that, let's see if anything happened here. Well, it was open when we lowered it, so something must have closed it. It's a frog. And that sound should be familiar. It's the first of the eyeballs we saw, which we already identified with a frog by use of the... Uh, image of a frog appearing in the opening of the cave. But now we've confirmed that with the sound. These frogs are actually called Itrams. And the uh, poison dart that was used to shoot the guy who found us in the cage in the beginning actually contained a poison that was extracted from this uh, frog thingy that we just captured. That's what this uh, thing is for, to trap these frogs. Okay, but now we stopped this fan by pulling the lever, and we can get through this duct. Could you just call this game Miss 2? Let's climb through some ducts. Fortunately, we're not trying to climb through it with magnets, uh, like in Mythbusters. That would have made a lot of noise. So, now we are in uh, Gant's laboratory. The game allows me to zoom in on this side of the desk without uh, any seeming purpose, because there's nothing there. Actually, if you go to Gans Laboratory immediately, um, if you go uh, to Crater Island immediately from Village Island and don't do all the stuff I did, you can find Gans Pipe lying here. If you come back now, it is gone. So obviously, Gen is moving around on this island while we're here. We're not alone. This here is Gen's journal. I'm not yet going to read it. I'll read it in the next video. 
We have uh, writing equipment. And some other stuff. It's just Gans workspace. This is looks like some kind of a model solar system, and it, it probably represents the stars in the star fissure rather than the actual sky. And look at that, it is the missing eyeball, the one from the water. So now we know the number on it, one. Well, since we already knew that the other, uh, other four balls had the numbers two, three, four, and five on it, it stands to reason that this one was one. Unfortunately, it doesn't make any sound other than the sound of a ball rolling on a wooden table. So, we still cannot solve this puzzle by sound alone. We're gonna have to get a look at the ball in its original location. Now, for those of you who uh, were playing this game and didn't see the ball floating in the water, like me the first time I played it, this here letter will help you. 87728. Well, based on the dates in the in Atris's journal, that's not that long ago. Last week, while monitoring the situation of the villagers from the scope in my survey room, I suppose that's the spyglass we saw in the uh, in the lake. I observed one of the natives swim out to a small object that appeared to be floating, but anchored near the entrance to the bay. I ordered the object removed from the water for inspection. Several days later, however, I was surprised to see another floating there. The missing object had apparently, and quite mysteriously, been replaced with a new one overnight. I've long been aware of the existence of similar artifacts on the villagers' island, but have paid them little notice until now. Tomorrow I shall send surveyors to catalogue the others. So this confirms that the missing ball is in the um, is in the lake, and it also tells us that it can be seen from that scope that's in the middle of the lake. And since we need to get a look at it to identify the animal symbol, that could be the solution to that particular problem if we could get a look through that scope. Okay, let's uh, look ar around a bit more uh, in this office. We see these lamps here which, uh, with work tusks around them. Gen likes to use uh, work tusks for all of his decorating. I suppose he got some tips from Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. If you didn't get that he, in his song, he says that uh, he uses antlers for all of his decorating. Uh, another desk. This looks like an ordinary tree, but if we look through the um, through the, the magnifying glass, okay, I couldn't think of that word. If we look through the magnifying glass, we see there's some sort of star-shaped thing in the middle. I'm not sure what the significance of that is. I suppose this is one of the trees they used to make uh, paper. We see here some books, a stamp, a lamp, some more paper. I suppose these are ink ingredients, maybe one of the ingredients uh, used to make the special ink used by the dunny. And I think this is a paper press of some sort. Wee! Well, wasn't that fun. Apparently, the game designers didn't feel like rendering all of the other images with the thing closed, so it opens again. We have yet one more desk here. This looks like a sort of a teapot, except it's completely closed. If we turn it on, we see that the water in it is doing something strange. It's moving up. This could be the answer as to the water's strange behavior we've seen elsewhere, like the holes in the, the lake and the tunnel with uh, the mining cart. Apparently, Riven's water doesn't like heat and goes away from it. 
And why would it do that? Well, we'll find out. We can open this drawer and see a collection of eggs inside and maybe some small stones. I'm not sure if these are eggs or not. And these, I don't know. They look like Dungeon and Dra Dragons dice to me, but that's just me. Um, some more scientific experiments that Gan apparently was doing. Equipment he was using for that. Maybe possibly experimenting with different ink formulas. Try and get his books to work. And another one of the uh, traps for the Itrim frogs. One more thing. Here in the middle is... Uh, looks like a furnace. Inside it is a book which has been partially burnt. Apparently it doesn't work. So Gen has obviously not been that successful in creating linking books. But we've seen linking books in the dome, so it means he must have had some success. Just not as immediate as we uh, as he might have liked. Okay, now to turn to Gen's journal. Again, I will read this journal in the next video, the same way I did with Aetis' journal. If you're not interested in me reading the contents of the journal, just skip it and go to the video after that. See you then. Welcome back. We have another journal to read, and this time it's Gen's journal. Like with Aetis' journal, if you're not interested in listening to me read the journals, then you can simply skip these videos. It will probably take me two videos to read the entire journal. Eighty-two, two, thirteen. Now, if you remember the uh, dates in Aetis' journal, they were all 87, so this is about five years ago. The latest ink formulation has proven a failure. Even when writing in my most promising books, I obtain only the barest glimmer of a connection. It is frustrating to expend so much effort creating a blank book, only to end up destroying it when it doesn't work. There are days when the lab is uncomfortably warm from the flames of these failed attempts. The further I refine each element, the formulation of the inks and papers, the physical dimensions of the books, the more I realize that the list of potential combinations is nearly infinite. It is during moments like these that I despair. Without access to Dunny, my long-term goals may never be accomplished. Nevertheless, there are avenues of research which remain to be explored. 82.5.8 I am discontinuing regular observations of the stars beneath the fissure. Although I have been able to track the dark cloud-like formations that migrate through the star field and have proven that their paths are cyclical, without proper instrumentation it is pointless to continue. My general theory concerning the nature of the fissure has remained unaltered since it first appeared. It seems that the fabric of this age has been breached in a way that permits matter to be hospitably exchanged between two discrete but overlapping spaces, much like a link, but the apparent physical contradictions surrounding this juncture defy logical reason. The great column of wind that was formed when the fissure first appeared suggests a vacuum as one might expect in space, yet my early experimentations reveal the presence of a breathable atmosphere. That Aetris and Catherine threw themselves into the void is further evidence that it might be able to travel, might be safe to travel, but without knowing its true nature I cannot take the risk myself. It is also difficult to say what would happen if I were to reopen it after so long, but it is likely that the results would be catastrophic, given the changes that have occurred in the age since that time. Maintenance on the steam vent caps completed, 83 to 10. I am extremely pleased with the continued success of this system. I believe the construction to have been true to the Dunny's designs of my memory, another example of the superiority of Dunny technology. It's ironic that Aetris and Catherine unwittingly provided me with such a convenient source of power. These are the steam valves that we've been seeing all over Riven. As with many of my views over the years, my thoughts regarding the origin of the fissure have changed. I have recently begun to wonder whether it was actually an unexpected byproduct of the changes Catherine and Atrus wrote into this age during their escape. Certainly by casting their linking book into the void they trapped me here quite effectively, but I do not believe that Atrus intended the book to be lost in this manner. Much better to destroy it than to risk the possibility of its falling into unknown hands. Also, 
had they foreseen the creation of the fissure, they would surely have thought that the vacuum it created would eventually consume the atmosphere of this planet, a fate which Catherine undoubtedly would have deemed unacceptable for her home world. If I had not been there to supervise the construction of the seal, this is most certainly what would have happened, for the villagers were far too frightened to even approach the vortex without my urging. I hold on to the belief that it was an unintended consequence of their waiting for, writing for another reason as well. I prefer to think that my son had meant for this age to be merely a prison for me, rather than a death sentence. 83514. The construction of the imagers has proceeded without fault. It is interesting to see how easily I've been able to adapt the Dani technology to mimic that of the Amat. In some ways the similarities between the two cultures were striking. I wonder if perhaps there had been communication or commerce between the two cultures in earlier times. Maybe Kita's people were even descendants of the Dani. It pleases me to think so. Here you can see these uh, imagers, some schematics of them. We've seen an imager like this in the uh, school, and we've seen one in the temple as well. Note, it's possible that if I were somehow able to supply the books with a power source of sufficient magnitude, I could suppress the variance enough to facilitate a solid link. It is doubtful that the geothermal cap generators could provide such an enormous surge. Perhaps I could adapt the fire marbles. I have been cataloguing the natural elements of this age for nearly 30 years now, yet still I continue to find evidence of the Dunny, Dunny's preoccupation with five. As a boy, it was very clear to me that the number five had a special significance to the Dunny society. From the ancient heraldic emblems of the ruling elite, humble homes of the commoners, it was ubiquitous. Its presence here is obviously a direct reflection of the minds that designed the text that I used to compose this age. Further proof that through their art, Dunny masters were indeed creating the marvelous words, worlds they wrote, and not, as many have mistakenly thought, merely building links to pre-existing worlds. While most of my constructions have been based on Dunny designs, I see now that the ones that I have imbued with the power of five are clearly the most beautiful, the most perfect, and, I believe, the most structurally sound. I am still attempting to determine how the Dunny color symbology reflects this superior design principle. Although superficially it is based on a six-color system, I am convinced that there has to be a deeper connection to five. I will continue to investigate. Well, these are the six symbols for the six Dani colors, and they are the symbols that we have seen on the rotating domes. 83, 9, 11. I finally made a breakthrough. I have succeeded in modifying the fire marbles to generate enough power to hold a descriptive linking book in a stable matrix. I have linked to a new world, it is a harsh and desolate age, but it is nonetheless well suited for my purposes, and so I have designed, designated it my 233rd. The numbers here are actually 9 and 8, but uh, Dunny is a base 25 number system, so it's 9 times 25 plus 8, which is 233. It also couldn't be 98, because the suffix is wrong. By studying it closely, I believe I will eventually be able to create a more appropriate age for us to resettle on. For now, I will build an office and set up my living quarters there, in order that I may conduct my experiments in safety and without distraction. Well, here we see a diagram of his office on the 233rd edge, and a very strange looking uh, mountain there. I must admit that I am proud of my work, to think that in such primitive conditions I have accomplished in 29 years what it took the original Dunny centuries to achieve. Note. Repair outerwear for work on this world. The goggles may need to be redesigned altogether. 84413. I have begun constructions on a series of link sites for each island that will connect Riven with my new office on 233. The survey guild has finally completed the site location for each island, according to my exact specifications, and the installation of the domes is underway at last. Work on the central power source got off to a bit of a bad start, I'm afraid. But the pace has picked up considerably since then, and I anticipate no further delays. I'm looking forward to finally having a civilized mode of transportation. So, this is the central dome on Dome Island, and it's apparently part of a power source for the books. The small domes provide power to uh, the individual books, and the central dome generates the power. Here we see the symbols again that we saw earlier uh, in the diagram inside the big dome. But we still don't know what they mean, but apparently they have something to do with these domes and the power source. Due to the rebels' continued disturbances, 
I've decided to install a coded access system into all of the domes. This here is the combination of the, uh, the domes, but it's not straightforward to decipher, so I will explain it uh, after I finish reading the journal. 8567. I caught one of my assistants looking over this journal today. I'm glad I've chosen to write it in a language they cannot, cannot decipher. Note, discuss the security with each guildmaster. No problems expected from the maintainers, educators and surveyors. Question the bookmakers and builders more closely. Okay, since I cannot f uh, finish reading this journal in a single video, I will continue from here in the next video. See you then. Welcome back. We're still reading Gen's journal. 861024. Today I heard several more reports of spirit sightings by some of the villagers. It seems that under Catherine's leadership, the rebels, or the Black Moiety as the villagers obst obstinately insist on referring to them, have attained a new level of sophistication in their terror tactics, and have renewed their campaign to intimidate the villagers into joining them, playing upon their shared superstitions. The villagers are certainly susceptible to this form of coercion, especially given of late the rebels' increasing act of vandalism and theft. 87.1.15 The Itrim traps have been steadily fruitful this year. Apparently the breakup of the islands has not adversely affected the subterranean ecosystems. Unfortunately, I imagine the rebels are experiencing a similarly generous harvest. No short shortage of poison for their darts this season. Such morbid issues aside, the sudden availability has allowed me to refine a particularly pleasant extract for my pipe, one that is much smoother than any of the others from recent years. 87.3.29 Chemical analysis of one of the rebel knives has yielded curious results. Its composition contains elements that are unlike anything I've encountered on the islands. It appears they have access to, res to a resource of which I am unaware, perhaps a mine or an uncharted island. We see that uh, Gannis traced one of the daggers in his journal. Note, most of the knives have been found on the south side of the village. This is the same area in which there have been reports of people mysteriously disappearing. I think a closer inspection of the area is warranted. The fact that they leave these distinctive knives as a sign of their presence concerns me. They're growing more bold, and seem to no longer fear discovery of their hideout. 87627 The latest measurements indicate that the recent trend has continued. The movement of the islands has slowed tremendously. My previous estimates predicted a total collapse in approximately three months, but with the new figures I am uncertain. I have nearly finished writing the 234th age, and I have every faith that it will indeed be a safe place for us to relocate to. Yet it would be helpful to know what has caused the halt in this age's breakup. Is it possible that it stay well after all? If so, I must discover how this age differs from my less successful attempts. My examinations of the 233rd age have thus far proven inconclusive. Or perhaps someone is repairing the damage to the 5th age. If so, it would almost certainly be Atus's doing. I have reluctantly decided to abandon my experiments into the behavior of the water of this age, as there are more pressing matters of which, on which I must now concentrate, leaving me little time for such speculative research. For future reference, however, my investigations up to this point have revealed the following. I believe the remarkable properties of the water to be caused by a life form that resides in it, specifically a type of bacteria. I am imagining a motile unicellular organism, but one with structures capable of holding bits of water, whose combined effect, via surface tension and a stronger force, causes the composite body of water to move in response to heat. Prolonged exposure to heat, for example a period of extended boiling, seems to kill the bacteria, which would explain its dramatic aversion to heat sources. Unfortunately, these theories are still not fully tested, and I remain ignorant both of its deeper nature and its possible uses. 8776 an exciting development. Last night, a squad of maintainers stumbled upon a lone rebel scout and obtained from him a most incredible device. It is a crystal that somehow powers these flawed linking books, much as my own system does, but with an obvious, obvious advantage. It is small and weighs only a few pounds, making it completely portable. Catherine must have fabricated the device before I captured her, obviously with an explicit Dunya schematic she must have brought with her to this age. If only I'd have... I'd had access to such a document all these years. Regardless, 
I can now concentrate solely on the writing of ages, and need no longer worry about building elaborate power supplies for each new book I write. This is a sobering reminder, however, that I must continue to seek an avenue to Dunny. Regaining access to the resources there may be crucial to the completion of my mission. And here we see a drawing of this uh, book-powering crystal that Catherine uh, made. Well, that's the end of uh, Gens' journal. In the next video we will continue with the game itself. See you then. Hello again. Last time we read Gan's journal, and we now know that after many unsuccessful attempts, Gan has succeeded in creating working books and ink, and has managed to link to a new age, which he calls his 233rd. These books are, however, flawed, and require a power source to operate. The rotating domes and the large main dome are part of this power source. This power source apparently uses fire marbles. They are a Dunny energy source. There is a type of marble which uh, releases energy by glowing. Gen has modified uh, these marbles to release their energy much more quickly. Basically, they explode. It also seems that Catherine came to Riven of her own accord and spent some time with the rebels, or the Black Moiety as they're apparently called, before being captured by Gen. Gen has discovered that the rebels have a much smaller device that can power the books, which he believes to be a Dunny design that Catherine brought with her. He also discover discovered that uh, Moiety's daggers contain a mineral he doesn't know, but has failed to connect these two effects together. Gen has yet to realize that the Moiety have a linking book, and that their hideout is in another age. Now, before we leave the journal, we uh, need to go back a little bit, because I skipped over something. Which is this. We see here five numbers, and this is the code to open the book domes. Now, we have learned uh, Dunny numbers in the school, and we've already applied them to uh, decipher the numbers on the eyeballs. However, there are some numbers here that we've never seen before. The device in the school only teaches us numbers 1 through 10. And the, here are some other numbers. Now we've seen that uh, the Dunny number system is base 25, so all numbers below 25 have their own unique symbol. And we need to apply some logical reasoning to understand it. We've seen that number for 1 is just a vertical line inside a box. The number for 5 is a horizontal line, which is just the number 1, but rotated 90 degrees. We've also seen the number 2 is uh, a curved line on the left side of the box, while the number 10 is a curved line on the bottom of the box, which tells us that the number 10 is just a 90 degree rotation of the number 2. We've also seen that the number 6 is a combination of the numbers 5 and 1, and that, in fact, all the numbers above 5 are combinations of 5 and the number 1 through 4. So with this, we can decipher the numbers above 10. So we see here 6, we've already seen that one. Here we see 10 with the line of 1 through it, so that's 11. Here we again see 10 with 4 through it, so that makes 14. Here we see the number 3 rotated 90 degrees, which would be 15, combined with the number 3. So this symbol is 18. And the last symbol is, uh, again, 15 plus 4 is 19. I remind you again, this, uh, this code is randomly generated, so don't try this code if you're uh, playing because your code will be different. You have to get to Gens Laboratory and decipher the numbers yourself. But with the information I just gave you, you should be able to do that easily. Otherwise, just look up on the internet how Dunny numbers work. Another important thing in this journal are these six symbols, which are the Dunny colors. These symbols are on the book domes, the rotating domes. And they will be important later. Okay.
Time to leave. This is the main door. We can open it now, but it just takes us back to uh, the path where we came from. And that takes us to Crater Island and to uh, Dome Island, if we follow it all the way. That's not all that interesting. There's, however, another door. Also, there is one of these buttons, which we know call maglevs. Yeah, let's push it. So obviously there should be a, a maglev nearby. Well, let's check this other door. And from here we can again see uh, Dome Island and Village Island. Oh. And we can see another island over there, where we haven't been yet. And there is indeed a maglev leading there. So, let's take the maglev. You do actually need to push the button. If you don't, the maglev isn't here. So you need to go back into the office and push it to call the maglev. Save this tiny button. Just to make it fun. When I was playing this game, um, just to practice for this Let's Play, it really amazes me how quickly you can actually play it if you know exactly what to do. I mean, this game took me weeks the first time and gave me sleepless nights because I couldn't solve some of these puzzles. But if you know exactly what to do and what route to take, it takes a couple of hours at most. Okay, let's get out. Let's notice also that there's a door on the other side of the maglev, so apparently we can go there too. But let's stick to this side for now. That's Crater Island over there. And uh, Felish Island. Okay, we go up here. Another Example of Gen's use of uh, work tasks. Apparently he has been hunting the creatures pretty heavily to get this many tasks. And there's a... No. Oh, where's it gone? There's a, an opening here. There's something below it. Maybe that other door on the other side of the maglev can take us there. Well, that's not actually maybe. I know it does. We continue onwards, we walk through this sort of strange crack in the middle of these two lakes. And there's uh, these strange rock formations on either side of the path. We come to another elevator, which we'll take. And here we finally find out what the Tetris symbols are that we saw earlier in one of the religious images in the rotating room. We saw them uh, on the diagram in the big dome. And now we finally know what they are. They represent the five islands of uh, Riven. Those islands are Crater Island in the top left. Map Island, which is the island we're on now. Some people also call it Surveyor Island. Village Island. Dome Island. And this one. Where, which, uh, we cannot actually reach at the moment. And these symbols represent the islands. We can actually push these symbols. And we see that through another one of these... Uh, water tricks, which we now know are caused by heat. We can cause the uh, islands to come up somehow. We can actually um, 
choose an island there. We're going to leave it with that one for now. So, we go in here, we see this grid with another grid below it, and we see that Crater Island is selected. We click on one of the uh, one of the cells of the grid. We can expand the topography of the island and view it here. We can rotate the grid as well and get a better look at different sides of the island. And the purpose of this is to find out where the domes are. But it looks we're out of time. So we'll do that next time. Welcome back. We're looking at a map here of the islands. Topographical map which shows us the terrain. The goal of this map is to locate each of the domes, the rotating domes that contain the linking books on the islands. We will need to know their exact location later. Currently we're looking at Crater Island. Well, if you remember, the dome on Crater Island was actually underground, so you won't be able to see it uh, on the map, really. But we do see this hole here, which indicates where the dome is. Now you can see that Riven itself is a grid of 5x5, five five, and that each of the cells of the grid is also 5x5, five five, making Riven in total a grid of 25x25. 25 25. And we can write down the exact location of the dome. So now we know where the dome is for Crater Island, but we'll need to know the location of all of them. So let's go back here and push down another island. The water for Crater Island goes back down. Now the water for Dome Island comes back comes up. Okay. We go back here. And show terrain for Dome Island. Oh, there's the dome. That's a big dome. We already knew that. And we have already located the rotating dome, the book dome, which is over here. So we don't really need to look at the rest of it. Okay, let's pick the next island. Well, this island is uh, the fifth island. This island has actually drifted so far away due to Riven's instability that you cannot see it anymore from any of the other islands. So, no matter where you are in the game, you cannot see this island. We cannot get to this island either. Which uh, could prove problematic, because we cannot find out what the symbol is of this island's dome. Before somebody thinks it's necessary to correct me, yes, I know we do get to this island. But we will only get to it after solving the dome puzzle. Okay, and once again we have located the dome, which is in this grid. And now we'll select Map Island, which is this island. Personally, I think this transition between the islands takes just a little bit too long. 
I mean, there's many things in the, the in the game that take a while, like rotating the room and taking the maglevs. Uh, you can actually skip the videos. I choose not to. For the sake of this uh, uh, Let's Play video. Okay, so this is a map island, the island we're on right now. You see that this is the the map on the beginning of the island. Ah, and there we have located the dome. One more island, which is Village Island. As I was saying, there are a number of things that take a while if you choose not to skip the videos. But none of them really take too long. This is the only one that does. It really is annoying to wait for the water to go down and the water of the other island to come up. Unfortunately, well, uh, actually fortunately, this is the last island we have to do. Also doesn't help that there's a few second delay between the video finishing and me actually being able to do anything. Okay, now this is a big island. So, locating the dome will be a bit uh, complicated. Except, of course, that I know where it is. And I'm going to cheat a little bit to save us some time. I'm looking at my old notes. And there is the dome. So now we have the location of all five domes. Very important to know that. We don't yet know exactly why we need to know that, but... Well, that hasn't stopped us before. So let's look around a little bit more here. This little lake here is actually a work tank. There is at least one work swimming around there, uh, around in it right now. I think there used to be more. I think there used to be as many as there are these totems. But right now there's only one. Apparently the work that's swimming down here has done some damage and has uh, thrown this thing out of alignment, which means that we can't see the symbol on the rotating dome. This isn't really a problem. We can just walk over here, and it just so happens that this symbol is quite easy to see as it comes by. It is just a circle with a horizontal line in it. And now we know four of the five symbols. We have another uh, option here. Another thing we can do. Let's uh, stop the dome, open it up. Because now we have the code. Let's see if we can try that. As I was saying, we now have four of the five symbols, and those are all the symbols we're going to get. Unfortunately, there are six uh, colors, so we're going to have to guess one of them at some point. Not yet, though. Let's try and open this up. So, if I got it right, the code was 19, 18, come on, 14. 11 and 6. And look at that. The dome closed again. Now we can get that book that's inside. That doesn't look like it's working. The 
gateway image is completely black. Well, we know from uh, Jan's journal that these books need to be powered. And apparently, currently the power is off. So note, by the way, here the number 233 on the cover. So, because the books aren't powered right now, we can't use it. So we'll just go outside. It seems that we'll need to turn on the power signal. And it is actually for that reason that we need to know these symbols and colors. Okay, that's everything we to do with the maps. Well, it seems we're running out of time again, so I'll continue in the next film. Hello everyone and welcome back. We're still on Map Island and we have uh, just determined the locations of all the domes and figured out that the books aren't working because they aren't powered. Well, let's go back to the beginning of Map Island. And turn around this maglev. We've noticed when we got here that there's another door there on the other side of the maglev. So unlike the other maglevs, which you can only exit from one side, this one can actually be exited from both sides. Get out here. Open the door. It seems to be a dead end. Except, of course, there's a lever here, so let's do it. Let's move it, actually. Um, you can notice, by the way, on the background, there's some more work uh, tusks. This is the golden elevator. So named because it's an elevator and it's golden. It will take us to the lower level of Map Island. Mouse was stuck there. Okay, basement number one, women's clothing and sports accessories, or something. You can see here, by the way, that this chamber is surrounded by molten uh, rock. This could be part of the reason for the instability of, uh, of Riven. It definitely means that it will be warm in here. Fortunately, we can't feel the heat. I can just feel the heat of my room, which is pretty high right now, because I can't turn on the air conditioning while I'm recording, because it makes too much noise. Okay. Oh, there's a guy. And he's running away. Why isn't anybody in this game happy to see us? Everybody's just running away from us. Let's try and follow him. Oh, we're too late. He's taking the Here you can clearly see, by the way, that the maglev really levitates above those rails. Well, that was actually one of the guildsmen, probably from the Guild of Surveyors, because this is Map Island. Well, we can't follow him. Well, we could follow him, but he wouldn't be there anymore. 
Okay, so let's check out what's in here. A bit of a gloomy underground room. And another chair. Which once again proves Gen's love for chairs with button work. Probably would love Japanese toilets. They have so many buttons. Okay, this looks out into the uh, water tank. The lake that we can see from the bottom. Well, let's see what these two levers do. They bring up viewers. What's this? That's Catherine. We have just located Catherine's prison. Except that we don't know where it is. At least we know she's still alive. Gen hasn't killed her or anything. Apparently, he uses this room to keep track of, uh, of her, to keep an eye on her. Oh, let's see what else we can get on this thing. Maybe we can get CNN. Hmm. That's not CNN. Here's to be a lake. We can use this to look around. This is, in fact, the scope that's in the water in the lake with the village. We can look at the village here. And there, finally, finally, the final eyeball, seen from the correct angle, shows the shape of a fish. And now I have a confession to make. The first time I ever played Riven, like I said, I didn't really notice these animal shapes. I never saw the frog, I never saw the wark. I only noticed the beetle and I thought that was just, well something cute that the designers uh, put in. I didn't really think it was a hint or anything. So I didn't realize that you could solve this puzzle by shapes rather than sounds. So I didn't really realize what I was supposed to be looking for here and didn't really notice the animal shape because I also hadn't seen the eyeball floating in the water while walking around the village. So this is the one instance where I needed a hint book for Riven. Other than that, I finished the entire game without it. I needed hints to find this symbol. It's still better than some other people. I don't think there's actually anybody who finished this game without any hints. If you did, let me know and I'll uh, worship you accordingly. Okay, we have another lever here. And another viewer. These symbols should look familiar. They are the symbols of the domes and therefore the symbols of the six dunny colors, as noted in Gen's journal. We turn it on, we see a light. This light is blue, so this symbol means blue. Now I think that these lights were meant to call uh, certain works. But since there's only one work in the tank right now, it doesn't really uh, do much. Probably call them to feed them or something. So this one is green. Yellow. Orange. And red. And there is the lone wark that is actually still in this uh, this basin. No, well, we don't have any food for you. So you can look annoyed at us. And here we finally hear what the wark sounds like. So if you had missed the uh, shape clue for the eyeball with the number 5 on it, here you can hear the sound of the wark and find out that that, that is the animal for that shape. Now there's actually a neat little uh, thing you can do here. If the game will let me continue. Thank you. Let's call him again. You can see he doesn't come from the same direction. 
Hi there, fishy. They are big, aren't they? Imagine hanging from the war gallows in uh, in the village, being threatened by one of these things. Really gonna annoy the hell out of him. Just keep calling him. Oh, well, he's losing interest, but we will persevere. Pissed off. Smashes against the glass. Now all you did was give yourself a headache. Okay, now that we've annoyed the hell out of that work, it's time to end this video. We'll continue next time. Welcome back. Well, last time we thoroughly annoyed um, one of the giant wark fishes, thingies. But I almost forgot that there is one more button we haven't pushed. Unfortunately, this light appears to be broken. Maybe the wark bumped into it. Maybe it just broke it because we were annoying it so much and it wanted to annoy us back. Um, doesn't really matter that much because there are only six colors when we actually get to uh, the puzzle that we need all this for. There are only six colors to choose from. We know five of them, so obviously the sixth one is the one for this symbol. What is more problematic is that we only know uh, the symbols for four domes, and the fifth dome we don't know, so we're going to have to make a guess there. Okay, well, let's get out of here. Now we have reached an important point in our playing of this game. Because we now have all the information we need to solve the two ma remaining major puzzles. Which is the stone room puzzle, which we've already seen, and the fire marble puzzle, which we haven't seen yet, but we do know how to solve it. Because we now know all the five animals for the uh, high worlds and their water, so the stone puzzle. And we know the symbols of the uh, domes and their color. Okay, we don't know one of them, but we're never going to find that one out. At least not until after we actually need it. So now we're going to solve the stone room puzzle. The fire marble puzzle, by the way, we haven't actually seen that one yet. It is possible to see it before uh, you actually need to solve it. But it would have been a bit out of the way. This here is the final uh, maglev, the only one we hadn't taken yet. It connects uh, Map Island to Village Island. And if you uh, remember, I've already told you that we're at once the second maglev on Village Island is below the Orc Hat elevator. I guess I might call it that. And indeed, that's where we end up. It is possible to the, to go to Map Island the first time you come here, 
But if you do that, if you go to Map Island from here, you actually don't see that guildsman running away and taking the maglev. You have to come to Map Island for the first time from uh, Crater Island in order to see that happen. Okay. And we've been spotted by the guard again. Once again, warning the villagers of our impending arrival. Okay. We don't have to take the whole detour with the... Uh, the underwater train and the war gallows because we can use this ladder that we loaded last time. And get back. Into the secret passageway. Again, wrote in his journal that they saw people disappearing on this side of Village Island. Well, obviously, it's because they were going through this uh, gateway and then going here and use a linking book, which we are about to find. This is one of the weird things, actually, is if you're going to protect your linking book with a code, why would you leave all the clues necessary to find that code on the island, rather than just telling everybody who needs to know? Anyway, we know the um, symbols and the order. The first eyeball, the one which was in the water, was a fish, so we need to locate fish symbol, there it is, push it down. The second symbol is the beetle. Third up is the toad, the itrum, which is uh, this thing. And fourth are the summers. And finally, fifth, the mighty wark. see the strange vertical lake on the wall is receding. If we look behind us, we see that the water has now gathered around there. And here, a linking book has revealed itself. And this is the device that Gen described that Catherine uh, came up with the rebels, ha rebels had to power the books. If you looked at this book, it was actually burned at uh, the edges. I forgot to show that, sorry. This is one of the Gen's discarded linking books, one that he tried to burn in his furnace in the uh, in his office. That's an interesting looking tree, and you might recognize it because it's actually the box art of Riven. Well, there's the tree, but we can't actually go there because, well, we have no boat and there's no bridge. Let's see what's behind us. This is an edifice representing Gen with a lot of knives in him. Not very nice. Uh oh. And we've been shot. 
Okay, so far we've linked to two different places in this game. First to Riven, and now here. This H is called Tay, by the way. And both times we've been captured. Apparently, not our lucky day when it comes to linking places. We're unconscious right now. One sort of half waking up. We appear to be on a boat heading for the heading for the big tree. And we're unconscious again. Yep, this is certainly very interesting. Ah, and we're awake. Well, that managed to um, make us run out of time, this little period of unconsciousness, so we'll have to explore this new age next time. Welcome once again to Let's Play Riven. Previously we arrived on the Age of the Rebels and were immediately captured. That's becoming something of a trend in this game. Now that we've regained consciousness, let's look around. We appear to be in a cell of some kind. If we look out the window here, we can see the lake. And that's, I think, the place where we linked into. So it appears that we're inside this giant tree that we could see when we arrived. It's the giant tree that's also on the uh, cover of Riven's box. Here's a ball. Don't appear to have any food right now. Through here we can look to the inside of the tree. There's a guy walking across the bridge there. It appears that the moiety who have uh, migrated into this age live inside this giant tree. We build a village there which somewhat resembles the village on uh, Riven, at least in that the huts are around. Looks quite nice actually. It's a shame that we don't actually get to explore this. I would really have liked to just walk around this village, see what it's like. While we're looking here, we can see several things happening. We just saw a guy pass by the window. But our immediate concern is to get out of prison. Is there anything here that can help us? There is not, but... Something appear someone appears to be coming. Who could that be? Katrina e nao da saia e palo. Yapa ai manai e lepo. I don't speak Ravenese. Still don't. Eu te sai. Becare tere wira pe e lo kene falapo. Te sai. Vai te falupe. Okay. Well, I don't really know what she said, but uh, it seems she was talking about Catherine. Although she pronounced the name a bit different. So this appears to have come from Catherine. Oh, there we go. Let's see what we got. Two books. One of these books is, yes, it's the prison book we got from Aetris in the introduction. Finally, after three hours of playing, we've gotten it back. My precious book, we've got it back. We also got another journal. This time one written by Catherine. Okay, uh, I said I would read the journals in separate videos, but we still have quite a lot of time left in this one. So I'll begin reading it now. If you don't want to listen to me, just stop this video and continue after I finish the journal. Now this journal is quite long, so it'll probably take me two or three videos to finish. I'll indicate clearly in the titles uh, which videos are just uh, reading the journal, so you can easily skip them if you want to. I linked to Riven a week ago. The smell of the place overwhelmed me moments before I could even could see anything. With my sight only partially cleared, 
I stood motionless, peering ahead through a dim veil which was slowly lifting. There was a violent clang, and bars appeared. I remember breathing slowly and very deeply, tasting the familiar riven air, but not recognizing a thing. I must have been hit with a dart right away. I thought it was an insect bite at first. I'm trying to remember it all, but it's difficult, maybe because of the drug. There was a voice. A man I did not recognize stood before me. Rivenese, though he was wearing dunny dress. He seemed to be talking to me, but the poison was already ta taking effect. A shadow crept in, and I fell asleep. Then there were the many voices, but I understood none of them. Like hundreds of people whispering, I couldn't make wake up. No matter, the dream did end. And now, to be here with Etty, it's been so many years, I didn't realize how much I missed her. Like a piece of me that I had forgotten I'd lost. She's beautiful, and so full of warmth. But the years have also left her with a wound, which was not there when we were children. Well, it seems that Catherine put a note in the book. Well, let's see it. I write quickly for my prison. Nila will return your book with the moiety which the moiety intercepted upon your arrival. After questioning her, I've concluded that it was written by Atris for a very specific purpose. Ken will desire to use it, although he may have suspicions. If you can find my prison, you will still need the combination to release me. Gan keeps it in his office. Then, I assume we are to signal Atris. I think I know how it might be done. But don't signal him before I am released. Catherine. Okay, continue with the journal. I do wish you were more interested. It seems like I'm asking all the questions. It's awkward. No one asked me where I've been or what I've been doing. This hurts. But I understand it. Their beliefs are born out of ignorance and oppression. They are gentle people, but they've had their nest destroyed, and now they frantically cling to anything that might save them. But why have they chosen to cling to me? I'm confused. As a child I always felt out of place here. I never belonged. They misunderstood me, and I couldn't relate to them. But now I'm overwhelmed by an intense feeling that I owe everything to them and this place. I thought I would never see them again, and yet I'm here. I've been given the second chance. But a second chance at what? Saving them? Fulfilling their prophecies? Being their savior? The moiety. Atreus would want me to chronicle all that I've learned. I can at least record some of it. It seems that when Atreus and I trapped Gen on Riven many years ago, our efforts were witnessed by most of the inhabitants here. Two of the Rivenese even witnessed a confrontation with Gen at the fissure, where I linked back to Mist and where Atreus threw himself into the abyss. Of course, they understood little of what they were seeing, but they somehow were able to guess that we had won, that Gan was no god at all, but only a feeble impostor, a false god, and that we had trapped him here on Riven. I always hoped they would deduce this simple fact, the simple truth, but their further conclusions have astonished me. Atreus had stripped Gan of his power, therefore Atreus must be a true god. As a god, he was choosing me, the, sp the spiritual misfit from the Rivenese womb, to be his wife. I was transcending into deity, and would lord over Riven forever. Thus the moiety, as they call themselves, were born, a dissident society, sworn enemies of Gen. I did not know of their beliefs regarding Atreus and myself until two days ago. Etty was, for some reason, hesitant to tell me. I can't figure out why. I know she doesn't believe these things. Of course, everyone else assumed that I would be aware of my own god status, so they made no effort to inform me. I only realized it at a recent gathering to which I was invited. <coughs> I sat at the front of a dimly lit and crowded cave, as they told a mythical story of my own life, acting out the, the battle between Atreus, myself and Gen, at the edge of the fissure. The events had been exaggerated into grandiose proportions. It was offensive, but I was unable to stop it. I was unable to break the illusion which is the very foundation of their hope and their purpose, and which had given them courage to band together and rebel against Gen. Since then, I have learned of other doctrines and beliefs that have evolved, the most disturbing of which is the conviction that one day I would return to Riven to free them. Some believe that I will overthrow Gen. 
Others believe that I will bring them to paradise. I don't know how to deal with this. I fight it myself. I love these people, my only real kindred. But they will not love me as an equal, which hurts me. I would rather be their slave than their master. Over the years, as Gen's power has become greater and greater, the Moiety's numbers have grown, and they have become more and more adept at hiding themselves. They now live in a com complex network of caves that he still has not discovered. The Moiety, for the most part, have completely severed their relationship with any of the Rivenese that chose against joining them. But I hope they have not sacrificed vital limbs in order to remove the cancer. Even Father and Enant are still on the surface, in Gen's domains, and I long to see them. But a dimness shrouds Etty's face every time I've mentioned them. Since this break took place, they have interfered with the surface in several superficial ways, occasionally sabotaging one of Gain's constructions and stealing food from the villagers. They wear strange masks and costumes during their scant forays to the island's surface, and take this regalia very seriously, refusing to be seen by anyone outside the moiety unless they are properly attired. Okay, I will continue reading the journal in the next video. See you then. Welcome back. I'm still reading uh, Catherine's journal, so if you're not interested, you can skip this video. They get much pleasure out of the fact that those on the surface are frightened by these costumes, calling them evil spirits or ghosts. It was during one of these expeditions that they fortunately rescued me from one of Gen's guards when I first appeared on the island. Otherwise, I am sure I would have been delivered to Gen immediately. I have no doubt that he is now searching for me. Of course, I am now aware that I am was fooled. Atris is not here. I was, at first, devastated by this realization. Now I am thankful. He would be in extreme peril here. Also, there is a quiet inner voice, an echoing remnant, that wants him far away. I have just witnessed an age dying, gasping its last breath. Today, I ventured to the surface to see what has become of this island. I hoped it would not be as bad as the moiety had reported. It was worse. They have become slowly accustomed to its steady decay, but I was devastated. The lips from which the kiss is wrought has fallen worlds, will fall cold breath. The womb from which the cry released has suffered hurt, will suffer death. To get to the surface, we had to travel through a complex series of doors and passages. Before the last of these doors, they offered me a weapon, which I accepted, and then a mask. I held the mask in my hands for a while wondering what sort of terror it might invoke in those members of my family who still live on the surface. But I also knew that I must keep my identity hidden from Gen's ever-vigilant eye, so I accepted it as well. Then, together, we swam a short expanse, expanse and emerged out of the surface of the ocean under the, a rocky overhang. The harsh sunlight made my eyes sting. But the fresh, rich air was exhilarating after the, these past weeks in the dank, dank caves. The two men with me were silent, communicating only with hand signals. The three of us emerged from the hiding place and made our way to the top of the plateau, at the edge of a thick and overgrown area of the forest. They stopped, peered through the foliage for a moment, and then turned to me, as if awaiting my command. But I could not respond. In fact, I found it difficult to move. I was smelling, hearing, and breathing my youth. This swept over me in a matter of seconds, but in seconds more, all feeling was gone. There was numbness. We did not stay long on the surface, but it was long enough to see the worst. Riven, which was once one island, has split apart into five distinct pieces, about a half a mile apart. Four of these have been claimed by Gen as, ex as, as his exclusive domain. Only his ministers are, and personal militia are ever allowed access to them. From my vantage point at the edge of the forest, I could see three of these islands. They are stripped of their former beauty and are riddled with Gen's self-absorbed constructions. 
the moiety rarely visit these closely guarded places. There is another island which I could not see, as it had evidently crept away to a terrific distance. The moiety are very unclear as to what exists on this island, except for the fact that they know it is where the great tree used to exist. The forest is located on the island, that the surface dwellers and the moiety still refer to as Riven, but they also still refer to their entire world as Riven. This island is where the village is, which has changed dramatically. It is also the one remaining province of the people, though Gent's influence can be seen everywhere. Of course, I know the reason for the fracturing of the islands. The moiety do not. Gen wrote this place, and it will die, as all of Gen's ages eventually die. I feel nothing today. I am nothing. I live in a cave on a dying world inhabited by people that... They are treating me so strangely. They don't know how to relate to a god. I am still an outcast here. They whisper amongst themselves, talking of my, tra of my bravery during my excursion to the surface. How I walked across the islands, bold and unafraid. They don't know me. Even Etty is uncomfortable around me. At times there is no awkwardness, and I am only Catran to her. But at other times I am someone else. I am afraid. There is such a grand numbness inside me. Today I do not feel closeness with my people. Neither am I offended by their worship of me. I do not hate Gen. I don't feel anything. I'm not even sure if... At least Nila is still close. I am boiling, I am... Gen is making and writing books! I wish they had told me sooner. Aetra should have re realized this would happen, of course. Gen would have written all of the materials necessary to the dunny craft of making books into this age, and probably every other age he ever wrote. He is attempting to write his way out of here. We did not imprison him. We only delayed him. This age has become his factory, and the people are his machines, all laboring in his mad pursuit to become a god, to carry on his noble, dunny cause. So far, he has not been able to produce a fully functioning book. Atrus has never believed in destiny, but I don't know what else to call it. It's too perfect. It's too much of a coincidence. They hang on my every word, though they do not understand them. I am their hope, and now I have returned. I owe this to them. There is no choice. It's been a long time since my last entry. It is hard to recognize, but I have found the Starfisher. It is located on the island, which the Rivenese call Aleppo, I think, meaning water pool, but which is referred to by the moiety as Eilatwan, meaning pool of stars. Having once allowed Aetris to escape this age without leaving an open door behind us, he has since been sealed with a skin of heavy iron. A crude telescope has been mounted over a locked viewport, the combination to which was acquired by the moiety before my arrival. Five, five, three, one, four. In the early days, the moiety, seeking an escape for, from Riven, briefly pursued the idea of reopening the fissure. They discovered a small mechanical stop to prevent the scope from hitting the portal window. Ultimately, however, they decided against opening it. I hate to think what would have happened to them if they had not left it alone. I have instructed them to stay away from it. I am almost certain that, with the decayed state of the islands, opening the fissure now would be disastrous. I have heard that in the days immediately following Gant's confinement on Riven, he attempted to determine the feasibility of navigating the stars beneath the fissure. For he had seen the mist book fall in from Atreus's hands into that very same space. To this end, he would have people, alleged transgressors of the law, thrown into it so that he could observe their fate. The telescope which still stands there is one he had built for these callous experiments. It is said that they did not die, but what became of them remains a mystery. It appears that the limits of Gant's optics prevented him from leaving, learning their fate. The star field beneath the fissure is not as it seems. It is a gentle space, a hospi as hospitable to life as a flowing river. This is how Atreus explained it, after he had fallen into it. But much more than that we have never understood, and we were never able to conclude upon its origins. But the visions tell me that it was born out of the will of the Maker, perhaps for some greater purpose that we cannot yet understand. 
I still remember Aetis's words from his journal. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the mist book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse. There must be some greater reason behind it. I neglected to mention it earlier. The unique shape of one of the great daggers which appeared during the escape from Riven, the very dagger that stands vertically at one end of the of Elithuan, has been adopted by the moiety as a symbol of their cause. It is a sacred symbol for them. It is the representation of all their doctrine, and a representation of me. To deface this symbol is sacrilege. They have their own mythical explanation regarding the, its sudden origins. I haven't told them that I wrote it into this age, along with all the other daggers. It's strange how such a young religion can be so unbending, even to their own god. I have tried to dissuade them of the notion that symbols contain so much power. The enemy uses this paranoia against them. They are fearful of Gen's symbol, and they are terrorized by his symbolic use of the warg. But they don't want to hear this from me. Perhaps my attempts have even caused some of the younger members of the moiety to doubt that I am Catherine. Okay, I will finish this video now and uh, read the final part of the journal in the next video. Hello again. We're still reading uh, Catherine's journal, but this should be the last video in which I'm doing that. So skip the next video if you don't want to hear me read the journal. My rare encounters with those who say they follow Gen have been discouraging. I have hoped to have some communication with the surface villagers, but they always flee from me. But I have heard news of some of the villagers' beliefs regarding Gen. Soon after we trapped Gen on Riven, he claimed that he was responsible for the daggers, placing them around the island as a reminder of their failure. In the village circle, circles it is told that this was a punitive act performed by Gen to mark the beginning of a period of restitution, at the end of which, if they have proven their devotion to him, they will be delivered into a new and better existence. I will continue to try to reach them. The door is open. Gen is free! Gen has the ability to create working books. In fact, he had written one age before I arrived, but has kept this accomplishment so well hidden that only his closest ministers were aware, until now. I'm not sure. Perhaps he has written others. Other news. A few years ago, before the moiety were forced into hiding, one of them managed to steal what appeared to be a test book that Gen had intended to destroy. It had been partially written, but did not work. They didn't tell me about it until now because they thought it was useless. Back then, none of Gen's books worked, but instead of correcting the problem at its source, he blamed uh, it on the impure wood of the Riven Forest, and proceeded to examine a cumbersome mechanical remedy, a complex series of domes, to heal his book's inherent flaws. One of the consequences of this crude solution, however, was that the domes demanded huge amounts of energy and the related problems delayed his success for quite some time. At last, however, he finished his work, and was finally able to link to an age, but he kept his success extremely well hidden. However, for some reason or another, belligerent pride, he has made modifications to the domes, which make it obvious that he is using the domes to breathe life into his half-dead books. Perhaps it's, he meant to lure us into using the books into the, in the domes, he can't believe that we would blindly swallow this suicidal bait. But he wouldn't know that we have one of his books, the stolen burnt book. There is a possibility of... Have read burnt book. H it describes would be unsuitable as new home for the moiety, must be modified. I will dream. Have requested a, gr have requested a group to solve combination that will open the domes. Once open, we can power the burnt book. I do not think Gen will interfere. He will leave the bait. Have begun writing the moiety's age. Now must acquire second book from Gen. There is tension. A strain blurns my vision. And nightmares. Neela and Etty stay close. Much has happened. Almost everything is prepared. We have stolen another book, but I'm concerned. Gen will miss it. We have also discovered the combinations for entering the domes, but we have not discovered the method for powering them. By powering our burnt book with Gen's domes, we will be able to link to this age, 
but we will only have access to the domes for a short of time before we are discovered. Therefore, we can only use the domes once. I must find another way to make the books work. The gateway image of Gant's books and our burnt book all seem to share the same sickness. If they are not powered, the images are black. It might be possible to clear the vision with only... We'll write substance into Moya the Age. Always ready. Now all we can do is wait for word from the Moyeteresque, who are on the lookout for Gan to power and use the domes. When he does, we will have access to one of Gan's domes just long enough. After linking to the age which I've written, I only have to locate the book window substance and refine and adapt it. Lying this window over the gateway image show, should heal the books and make them work. This will allow me to use the second stolen book and return the riven with more of the book windows. We will then no longer have to rely on Gan's clumsy domes. I laugh at these plans. I sound like Atrus. I'm risking my life, but I feel no fear, only anxiety. Perhaps it is the source of my nightmares. The fissure, like a great wound, is opened. It stains the riven soil with blood. I hold the moiety knife. The voices grow so loud. For their part, the moiety have complete faith that I will accomplish my task and lead them to a better world. It is the fulfillment of their prophecy. But they are also fearful and tense. I don't know what they would think or do if I fail. It is done! It seems too good to be true. I feel like it's all still a dream. We have already evacuated all of the moiety into this new age. It is beautiful, and I am pleased. At last, my people will live in safety and comfort. They stand under the blare sky, unafraid and dazzled by their freedom. They are happy. They have named it Tay. There is still much work to be done. We are not protected yet. The only way to completely safeguard this place is to destroy the book which links here from Riven. But I do not even know how to bring this up to the moiety. They will be extremely reluctant about destroying their only link to Riven. I share their hesitation. I would be cutting off my only connection. But for their sake, it must be done. I am anxious to know if one of the active I'm anxious to know if our activities have aroused Gan's suspicions. If so, we must act quickly. Even so, I feel that now we are impregnable. Tomorrow, I will return to Riven to see Gan's reaction for myself. But tonight, I finally rest. And then she was captured by Gan. Okay, so now we have finally finished reading this journal. Very long, hard to read handwriting as well. So, next time we will continue and return to Riven. Hello again. Well, we've finally finished reading Catherine's exceedingly long journal. And we've learned that she came to Riven because she believed that Atris was there. If I recall correctly, this was part of the plan of Atris and Catherine's son, Sirius and Akinar, to get their parents out of the way while they executed their evil schemes. It is just quite the family. His father has delusions of grandeur, his sons were sociopaths, and his daughter Yisha, well, she's just plain weird, as those who've played Uru and Mist Five will know. Apparently, Catherine came to Riven without a book linking back. A stupid thing to do, considering there are no linking books on Riven. Maybe she thought uh, Atris had a book with him. Well, Catherine was trapped in the cage at the linking spot, just like us, but uh, also like us, she was rescued by the moiety. At the time, the moiety were hiding in caves on Riven. Catherine stayed with them for a while and learned their distorted version of how Atris and her defeated Gen. And to her dismay, she found out that the moiety believe Atris and Catherine are gods and that they will save them. By using a book stolen from Gen, Catherine was able to write this age, Tay, and bring the moiety here. Catherine also came up with a better way to fix Gen's broken books, a small window that can be placed over the gateway image. The materials she needed to for this, she wrote into the New Age. So, unlike what Gen believed, the gateway image was not Dani technology that Catherine took with her, but it was something that Catherine came up with herself. Catherine also wrote us a note from her prison. I assume Nila, the Rivenese woman who gave us the journal, has to bring Catherine food once in a while or something, and that Catherine used that opportunity to find out that we were here and to tell Nila to...
take us back, uh, to bring us the prison book. We also learned the combination of to open the hatch beneath the telescope, and um, which would reopen the starfisher. But Catherine also told us explicitly not to do that before we've rescued her, and it's really, really a bad idea to do that. <laughs> Seems like someone's coming again. It's Nila again. Hopefully it's not more journals. Don't worry. I promise I'll rescue Catherine. Okay. Goodbye, Nila. And goodbye, Che. Because we are going back to Riven. Yes, it is unfortunate that uh, we cannot explore more of this age. But we cannot. This is the uh, window placed over the gateway image to fix the broken book. We linked back to Riven, back into the stone cave. We see that the opening holding the book to Tay has resealed itself. Which makes sense, of course, it would automatically close after it's been used. So that no one else can use it. Now, I said before that I found it strange that the... Um, that the moiety would leave these clues around to find this book. But actually, I think this may be intentional, uh, done by Catherine's order. She, she would leave these clues behind in the hope that Atrus would find them and would be able to find the moiety age where she is. Of course, she's no longer there because Gan captured her. But probably these clues were there so that Atrus would be able to find his way to uh, the, moiety the moiety age when uh, he came to rescue Catherine. Unfortunately, we were able to use these clues instead. Okay, so now we're back on Riven. What else can we do? Well, the game of Riven basically has two major puzzles. This one, the, the uh, stone cave puzzle, is the first one. And the other major puzzle is the fire marble puzzle, which I've mentioned several times so far, but we haven't seen it yet. The fire marble puzzle is um, uh, related to the book domes and the symbols and the colors. As I've said before, we know four of the five symbols and we know five of the six colors. We know the locations of all five domes. So we have the information we need to solve this puzzle. We just need to actually find the puzzle. This is something when I was playing the game for the first time, it took me quite a long time because I had actually been able to gather all that information uh, based on the assumption that I would need it. But because I had not seen the lever to raise the bridge on the, in the big dome, I didn't know where to find the puzzle and it took me some time to find it. Fortunately, now I do know where it is, and we are going to go back to uh, Dome Island, back to the beginning. Because of the optimal route that I'm using, this is the only time to take a back lap twice. We've taken this one to get to the village, we have to take to get back to the Islands. I should note, by the way, that I'm playing the uh, DVD version of Riven. 
If you play the original CD version, you have to switch CDs every time you go to a different island, which gets very annoying, especially if you don't know what you need to do, and so you cannot follow this optimal path. You have to constantly switch islands, constantly switch CDs, which gets very tiring. Okay, we see that the door into the temple is closed, but fortunately it opens up as we approach it. Again! So Gen's head appeared in the projector there, which would seem to suggest that he was broadcasting from the uh, room with the chair we know to be nearby. But when we look inside, he's not there. So either this was a recording, we've already seen uh, that these images can also show recordings, or he just uh, went away really quickly. And we're back on Dome Island. Now, well, before going into uh, the dome, let's go to the uh, to the telescope. One thing I didn't uh, point out uh, at the beginning is that while all of the floor here is rock, this here is metal. This metal is there to seal off the star fissure. And we now have the combination we need to open the uh, hatch. Excuse me a second while I look it up. The combination should be 5, 5, okay, it's not working, the buttons aren't working, um, it could be because the telescope is not in the top position. Yes, five, five, three, one, four. And that opens the viewport. The viewport is protected by glass. And we can now look in the telescope and we see stars. So there are stars below the ribbon, which is really weird. But well, everybody has already pointed that out that nobody know, really knows what the star fissure is. The, the telescope can be lowered, but it is prevented from hitting the glass by this stop here. When it comes time to open the uh, star fissure, we can remove this stop. But if we were to do that now, the Atrus would come and Catherine is still trapped, so that would be a very bad idea indeed. Well, we're out of time. So next time we will solve the fire marble puzzle. See you then. Welcome back. Well, we now know how we can open the star fissure, which is how we'll uh, signal Atris once we're done. But since we still have to trap Gen and free Catherine, signaling him now would be a very bad idea. If we do signal him now, we get one of uh, Riven's bad endings. In general, it's impossible to die in a mist game, any mist game, but there is a way to get bad endings in most of the games, and that would be one of them. <coughs> okay, but we need to trap Gen. In order to do that, we need to find Gen, and we know that he's probably on his uh, 233rd age. So to get there, we need to power his books. And we found out by now that his books are powered by this giant dome. But we couldn't see any controls last time we were there, but we did notice an upper level. Unfortunately, I've already uh, raised the bridge from the other side so we can get there. If I hadn't done that, I would have had to cross the bridge, raise it from the other side, then use the rotating room to get back to this side and climb up it, which would have taken some time. So now I've saved us some time and we can immediately go to the top of the dome. 
Okay, well here we see a device in front of us and a switch. Let's look at the device first. This device looks like a large grid and besides it are six colored marbles. Can we look at the top? No. Um, these marbles are the fire marbles which we've uh, talked about before so this is indeed the fire marble puzzle. Well, you'll notice that this grid looks a lot like the map of Riven that we saw earlier. We see the shapes of the five islands of Riven. We also know that we can locate the domes in uh, on this map and that each dome has a color associated with it. So it stands to reason that each fire marble will power a specific dome when placed in the correct position. So, let's uh, do that. This is Crater Island, and its dome had the symbol for the color purple and is located here. This is <coughs> Dome Island, the one we're on, and its dome had the color green and it's located here. Map Island is this one, shaped like a Tetris L block, and its dome was orange and it's located here. Oh, I didn't grab on. And Village Island has a red marble and the dome is located here. So we're left with the fifth island. We haven't been there yet. According to Catherine's journal, this island is where the great tree used to be. And we don't know what is there currently. We also haven't seen that dome, so we don't actually know the color. Now all the solutions I've ever read for this puzzle say that you have to guess. And there's only two options, so guessing isn't actually that hard. You just need to try it twice. But in truth, I think you don't need to guess. At least I've come up with a way to reason this, and I, that's what I did the first time I played the game. I was able to reason which color you were supposed to use. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence that that reasoning gives you the, the correct solution or if that's actually the, the way you're supposed to solve it. I would have to talk to one of the game designers to find that out, I suppose. <coughs> My reasoning is as follows. In Gen's journal, he said that he was confused that the Dunny color system uses six colors because the number five is so important in Dunny culture. So, he thought it should be possible to reduce the Dunny color system to just five colors. Now, if you want to go from six to five colors and still have a usable system, you would need three primary colors. Now, depending on what uh, color system you're using, the three primary colors are either red, green, and blue, or red, yellow, and blue. Well, green is already on the grid, so the only remaining primary color is blue. If we choose yellow, we don't have three primary colors on the grid, so we don't have a usable five-color system. So that's why I reasoned you should choose blue. The dome location is here, as we saw on Map Island. Okay, my reasoning works. It is actually blue that you need to choose. I don't know if it's a coincidence or if I'm correct in this assumption based on the color model. So. Pulling this lever lowers this uh, press. It's locked into place because these fire marbles, they've been altered to release enormous amount of energy, the, the amount of energy that Gen needs to power his books. So they need to be locked into place securely. Pushing the starter switch. marbles are activated and 
we can now hear the steady hum of machinery, indicating that we got the combination right. Okay, so now we've powered the book domes, but we need to get to one of these domes. The easiest way to do that is to use the rotating room. So yeah, it's boring, but we're going to have to rotate this room a few more times. But the only alternative way to get to a dome is to go to another island and go to that dome, which would take even more time. We need to rotate it three times. One final time. Promise that's the last time we'll ever use the rotating room in this game. Okay. With the room in this configuration, we can get through this door. And we opened the door on the back from the other side when we uh, came here from Crater Island. We can go through here and into the big dome across here out of the dome to the elevator Elevator down. And we make our way to this dome. Okay, so it's time to reuse the combination to open the dome, which was 19, 18. 14, 11, come on, and 6. And with the books properly powered, we see a gateway image appear. But we are out of time, so we will link to Gantz 233rd Age in the next video. Welcome back. Well, we're finally ready to link to Gens 233rd Age. What we see here is the gateway image looking into that age. We see Gens Laboratory, which he built there. The top is shaped like a sort of giant satellite dish, but it's actually just to collect water. The 233rd Age is very dry, so he has to collect rainwater that way. Well, let's link there. There we are, inside Gens' study or laboratory or whatever. Unfortunately, we're trapped again. Another cage. Is it really that difficult for us to go anywhere in this game without getting trapped? I mean, we went to Riven, we got trapped. We went to Tay, we got trapped. Now we went to H233 and we got trapped. Well, there are linking books here back to various islands of Riven, 
But unfortunately, these are Ken's broken linking books and they need to be powered. And they're not, so we can't use them. One thing you might be wondering is why these books are so much smaller than the big Riven book Aetris had in the beginning. Well, that's because there's actually two types of books that are used by the Dunny. What Atris had is a descriptive book, which actually describes the age as it looks like. These books are just linking books. They link to the existing age, which is described in the descriptive book. Of course, as we know, and which Gen doesn't, even the descriptive books just describe existing places and don't create them. Okay, let's see if this button can get us out of the cage. Oh, well, doesn't look like it did. What it did do was call Gen. Face to face with our enemy at last. I apologize for the cage. You'd better be sorry. Once I get out of here? I'm afraid this situation has often required of me a more primitive code of conduct than I might otherwise have chosen. I am Gen. I assume you've heard of me. Yes. Well, I suspect you have acquired some false information of who I am now. Not that my son would have lied to you about me. No, not Atris. It's just that... Well, I'm sure he believes me to still be the depraved father I once was. Yes. I even tried to kill him once. God, if I had accomplished that, who knows what I would have become. A great father, indeed, who tries to murder his own son. Thankfully, he trapped me on age five, a prison of my own creation. No books, no precious inks, no ages to link to, nothing but my own foolish ambitions. That was 30 years ago. 30 years, 30 lifetimes, what does it matter? No sentence could be too harsh for the man I was. But I have changed. Well, what we've seen on Riven says otherwise. To be sure, the deeds of my past can never be completely atoned for. But my mission was an honorable one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This, is this is all a all bit, a bit awkward. awkward. I, it's been a long time since I've attempted to persuade any one of my intentions. Most of the people here have already made their minds up about me one way or another. I myself do not trust the words of most men, so I don't expect you to believe me. In the end, though, don't. you may discover that I do have more than mere words to offer. Atris's choice of punishment has been hard on the people of Riven, and many have suffered because of it. The it island because has of been you. steadily decaying for years, but according to my most recent measurements, it appears that the Fifth Age has entered its final days. Unless the villagers can be relocated soon, the island will collapse entirely and everyone will perish. It has taken me a long time to do it, but it appears that finally I'll be able to make some substantial amends to my past transgressions, especially in... Well... I'm afraid I've had some trouble with Catherine and the moiety. In any society, there will always be a small percentage of the population with rebellious tendencies. Before Catherine appeared, the moiety, as they call themselves, had been relatively harmless. I mean, the natives here are a fairly violent people by nature, but I'd almost come to accept their presence. It seemed inevitable under the circumstances. 
Upon Catherine's return, however, their violence intensified considerably. It seems she's become some sort of religious savior to them. And as far as I can tell, she's come to believe this herself. So I've had no alternative. I had to separate her from her people. I must admit, though, that my concerns were not entirely for her safety alone. The actions of Catherine and the moiety have put my own life at risk on numerous occasions. Consequently, the lives of all the people here. Therefore, I must ask you to refrain from any attempt to free her. Although I'm sure Atrus desires it. Indeed, he must desire it with all his heart. But he is completely unaware of her recent state. Which brings me to the point of all of this. The linking book you brought with you. You're very fortunate to have recovered it. If I may. Thank you. Atrus said the code was undetectable if you didn't know it, so he shouldn't be able to tell that it's a prison book. But he is understandably suspicious. Perhaps it would be best if you went through first. Perhaps it would, but if I did, wouldn't I get trapped? I can't risk that. No, 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 I can't. I really can't. You may need some time to decide. That is reasonable. Until then, as a token of my good intentions, I will allow you free access to my linking books, cruel though they may be, and to the rest of the fifth age. Please understand, there is nothing I want more than a chance to resolve matters between Atrus and myself, especially in light of what has become of Catherine. But unless you are willing to demonstrate to me that your intentions are honorable, I cannot risk it. The sanctuary I've been writing for the islanders is nearly complete. After all these years, it would be a shame if I were unable to finish it. The work I am doing is quite demanding. Please don't signal me unless you've decided to use the book. The switch will reset itself once you link from here. Okay. Well, that was our first meeting with Gen, and it seems that we've run out of time again, which means I will end this video now. Next time, we will finally see Catherine. Hi again. Well, Gen has just left, because we didn't want to use the prison book. He doesn't trust the book. Which makes sense, because it is actually a trap. So he wants us to use it first, which I didn't. But if you think about it, I can actually safely use it. Because as described in Atrus's journal, the prison book works by trapping somebody in the void between ages. But if a second person were then to use the book, the first person would be set free, while the second person gets trapped. So if we use the linking book, and after that, Gen uses it, believing it to be safe, he would get trapped and we'd be free again. So we can actually use the book safely. 
But I did not do that on purpose because I first want to go and visit someone else. Gen gave us access to his linking books and on the surface it seems like that would just give us a link back to Riven where we've already been. Except there's one island on Riven where we couldn't get by any other way. Which is the island represented by this icon. That's the fifth island. The island where the great tree used to be. And considering we've been everywhere else and haven't found Catherine yet, it would stand to reason that this island is where Catherine is being held. So, let's link there. As soon as I get my cursor back. Well, there we are. We are inside. Oh, yeah. It's open. Okay, so this is the island of the Great Tree. We can see the remnants of the Great Tree, but it has long since been cut down by Gen. In order to make paper, of course. It's a shame. It would have been nice to see it, because it's really a giant tree. There's a little building up there, so let's check it out. Now here we're in an elevator with some bars in it. And some controls. Look at these controls, we can notice that these buttons all make a different sound. Oh, we need to remember those sounds, it's important. This switch currently does nothing. If we pull this lever, or handle actually, then it raises the elevator. Which takes us to place where Catherine was held, which we saw earlier in the scope on Map Island. You made it. Yes, I did. But how'd you get past Gen? Oh, I didn't really. sense. He's waiting for you to make a mistake. He's hoping you'll lead him back to Dunny. You can't let Gen... Atrus sent you to save me. But if Gen gets back to Dunny, he'll kill him. I think I know how to signal Atrus, but it's going to take both of us. You'll have to trap Gen before you can get the combination. Be careful. Go then. If you won't help me, then I have nothing more to say. Okay, well, I'll go. I'm sure Gen uh, f fell for that little display. Wasn't suspicious at all with her whispering to me and stuff. So, it seems that currently we cannot rescue Catherine because we need a combination to open this cage. In order to get that combination, we first need to trap Gen. Uh, one thing I should note about this particular room is that this was actually Gen's study before he moved to the 233rd age. The cage was meant to... Uh, oh, there goes Catherine again. The cage was actually meant to keep people out. But now that he's trapped Catherine, it sure seems that it's also very good at keeping people in.
Normally when Ken would be in his study here, the gate would be open. But when he leaves, he would lock the gate from the outside. So that other people wouldn't be able to get in. But the upshot of that is that if somebody is inside while the gate is closed, they can't get out either. Well. Let's go and trap Gen then, shall we? Okay. 19. 18. 14. 11. 6. Fortunately, power source is still on. We'll link back to uh, 233rd Edge. Before we signal again again, I'm going to uh, end the video, because I'm not sure if the video we get, uh, the cutscene we get after that will fit in the remainder of this video. So I'll see you next time. Welcome back. Well, after talking to Catherine in her prison, we have returned to Gen's 233rd age, and our goal is now to capture again. In order to do that, we will have to prove, quote-unquote, to him that the um, linking book we brought is safe. And we can do that because if he uses it after we've been trapped, we'll be freed again. Of course, we'd be really screwed if he actually knows it's a trap and is just trying to bait us into using the book. Let's hope that's not the case. I'm relieved you've returned. I thought perhaps you had decided against it. Well, it would have meant not seeing your ugly face again. Here. I shall follow you directly. Okay. There we go. And now we're trapped inside the book. Of course, Gen is still suspicious, and there's supposed to be some time. And the more times you hesitate in opening your book, using the book, the longer this would take. But in the end, Gen cannot resist temptation. Notice, by the way, that he has his gun with him. So obviously, he intends to threaten Atrus, or maybe even kill him if he were to get the dunny. And we're back. Gen is trapped in this book. We can't tell that he is, but he is. If we were to use this book again now, uh, we would free Gen. Which is a really bad idea, because understandably, he's really pissed right about now. Okay. One of the side effects of uh, Gen using the book and freeing us is that we're now on the outside of the cage. Oh, what's this? I do anything with this? Oh, appears to be a recording of some music. 
Okay, well, uh, that was uh, something I didn't actually know about. We can pull this lever here, which will open the cage. I assume that whenever Gen uh, links to Riven, he will take something long with him, probably his gun. So that when he gets back, he can reach this lever from inside the cage. Let's look at this strange landscape here in the 233rd age. This strange rock formation makes you wonder how that could have been formed. Well, that's not actually that hard uh, to think about, even if you're not a geologist, and I most certainly am not. It seems that the sea here, the sea level would have been higher in the distant past, causing the rocks below the uh, sea level to corrode and form this kind of uh, formation. You can actually see that kind of effect on uh, real rocks in some places in the world, just not that this large scale, at least not that I'm aware of. Okay, let's look up some more stuff. Here we have Gen's writing desk. Find here a cortina, a blank book. Where you can write. Well, uh, the, this desk is actually set up to exactly resemble the way Gen's father would have laid out his desk. We see various uh, uh, equipment here and a drink. It's supposed to be using a bone as a spoon. Very interesting. This is the uh, special ingredient used to make the ink work. We used to make uh, this Dunny special do its job. A pen to write with, of course and an inkwell in the form of a beetle reminding him of the source of the ink. And that's all there is on the desk. Some dunny writing on the top, I don't know what it means. Here is a, a furnace. And apparently this furnace is used to power these books. It seems that Gan has at least gotten a little better uh, powering the books himself so he doesn't need a giant dome contraptions with fire marbles. He probably would have written this edge so it can easily provide him the power he needs. Okay, let's uh, check down here. This is Gen's personal sleeping quarters. On the wall here we see uh, some portraits and this is actually uh, the portrait of Gen's wife. There are only two people in this entire world who Gen actually respects and those are his wife and his father. But this is his wife, Kita, um, who is I believe human he met her on Earth after the fall of the Dunny civilization. And she died giving birth to Atris, unfortunately. And it says to Gen, who is my husband and my salvation, I dedicate myself to the love that uh, rescued me. It's very hard to read, but I think that's what it says. And this uh, is a portrait of... Uh, Gen's father, who is also called Atrus. Atrus, of course, this Atrus, the old Atrus, married Tiana, who was also uh, a surface dweller, a human from Earth. And they gave birth to Gen, who is half Dunny, half human. And Gen, in turn, gave birth to Atrus, who is only a quarter Dunny. And this uh, old Atrus, Grandpa Atrus, if we can call him that, because being full Dunny, he has the pale irises that are characteristic of the Dunny. To the side, we see a sort of horn-like instrument that 
Gannon enjoys playing. On the table, we find a plate, a lamp, and this. This is uh, what looks like a globe. And it appears to be a clock. Did you notice the sounds when it opened up? Those sounds sound like the sounds that the buttons made in uh, Catherine's cage. So these sounds actually indicate the order in which you have to push those buttons. Apparently, Gen was afraid that he would forget the uh, combination. And put this little hint there, much the same way that uh, other people would write down their passwords. So now we know how to open Catherine's cage. Scan's bed. And oh, over here is a sink. We can actually get some water, wash our hands. Tapestry on the wall with Gan's symbol on it. And here's an imager. If we turn that. You see an image of Kita, Gen's wife. As heartless as Gen is, he really loved her. I don't know exactly what she's saying. I think it's a pledge to... Uh, Pledge of her love to Ken or something. He must really miss her to keep a portrait and this imaging device. Okay, well, before we go and rescue Catherine, we have one more journal to read. Well, since we're out of time, that is just perfect. We're going to end this video here and read Gen's final journal in the next video. Again, if you're not interested in the journals, just skip that video and you can see how we rescue Catherine. Welcome back. Well, before we go and rescue Catherine, we have one more journal to read. This time it's Gen's journal. The journal we read before from Gen, the one that was in his laboratory on Crater Island. And that one was up to the point that he completed the 233rd edge. Here we can find out some more information. As always, I'll dedicate this video to reading the journal, so if you are not interested, just skip it. 86929. I start this latest journal with astounding news. Catherine has returned to the fifth age. And though it sets my teeth on edge to say it, she has also vanished as quickly as she appeared, stolen from me by the rebels. As my guard tells it, she linked into the Fisher Plateau cage, as I'd guessed, when suddenly he was set upon by a band of rebels who dated him, who darted him, <laughs> and spirited her away. I suspect the truth of the matter was that he was as dumbfounded at actually witnessing someone link in after all this time, that he presented an easy target for whichever rebel had happened by at the moment. The damnable luck of it. <clears throat> he did get a good enough look at her, though, to verify that it was indeed Catherine. He also claims that he inspected all of her belongings and found no linking book on her person, a fact which, if true, makes the question of why she's returned here all the more puzzling. While I am sick with frustration at having lost the only quarry that Kate has ever caught, I am also filled with hope. She may yet provide me with a way back to Dunny. It is true that I have managed, despite overwhelming odds, to break free of the confines of the Fifth Age and resume my mission to save my culture from extinction. But I fear that unless I am able to regain access to the vast resources that lie in the city's ruins, the task of reconstructing that great civilization will be impossible. If Catherine did bring her linking book with her, then I am halfway there. If not, then she is trapped in the fifth age and I can assume that my emotionally crippled son will soon be along to rescue her. Either way, it is crucial to my plans that I find her soon. Her presence here now forces me to take the rebels more seriously. I should never have permitted them to survive this long. Once again, the Great Wark has demonstrated its usefulness to me. This past week the villagers have been most difficult to manage. 
Apparently they have learned of Catherine's arrival, and their fear of this mythic beast has been all that has kept them in line. Had I known how truly useful these prodigious cultures would have to, would prove to be, sorry, how truly useful these prodigious creatures would prove to be, I would have perhaps captured more of them while the local population was still plentiful. Although, to be sure, if these disturbances continue, my current pets will be in no danger of perishing for lack of nourishment. The search for Catherine continues. I now deeply regret my mistake of having ever taught these primitive people anything at all about the books. It seems that with each passing day, I more sorely realized the extent to which they were not ready for that knowledge, not even in the simplified manner in which I had presented it to them. Their minds, adapted only to the exceptionally menial tasks of village life, were incapable of comprehending the art in all its complexity, and thus were unable to extract the essential underlying principles that are, ironically, so elegantly simple. It is obvious that much of the discord that exists between us stems from their failure to grasp the full meaning of the information I gave them. If they'd been able to gain even the smallest glimpse of the future I'd planned for them, then this conflict would not exist. The minds of children are much more malleable. With the proper instruction, they have developed a more appropriate posture towards the culture that gave them their lives. At times they take to it almost as if they had a bit of dunny blood in them. Given the natives' inborn limitations, however, I am quite careful that more gain a level, that none gain a level of understanding that would permit them to act against their future, the way that Catherine did. How foolish I was to think that she could contain such knowledge responsibly, when it was quite clear that my own son could not. Atrus, still he remains one of the greatest disappointments of my life. I should never have left him with my mother. By the time I'd returned for him, he had already been poisoned as to all thoughts of the Dunny. Perhaps it was the only way that she could rationalize the fact that she had been responsible for the collapse of their civilization. So much destruction, so many great lives lost. The guilt must have been unbearable. I do have vague recollections of the love she had for my father and for our world. But ultimately, she was an outsider whose ignorance of the Dunny became the catalyst for their demise. If I am able to rebuild our cult and in the process correct such crucial weaknesses, then perhaps what she did was ultimately necessary in order that a new era of prosperity might someday come to pass. 8714. These last few weeks I have found myself frequently beset by images from the past. As I stood in the schoolroom today I was reminded of my own childhood, the years I spent in the bookmaker's guild, father's imminent pri immense pride at each of my small accomplishments there. He was an important man in the Dunny world, but I can't bear to think of him for long. It's too much. I was too young to see such a thing. 87-2-8 I've got her! Late last night, I received word that Catherine was in the village attempting to persuade the people to join her. I lost two good men in the process, but I would have paid a hundred times that number for such a prize. She's been taken to the prison island, where I've been attempting to gain some insight as to the reason for her presence here. I've had to fight the all but constant impulse to put her on the gallows. She has adopted the most infuriating stance of only answering my questions, when she answers them at all, in her native tongue. Even so, she is a poor liar. I am now quite certain that her return to Riven was unintentional, and that she brought no linking book with her. As far as her unwillingness to show me the location of the moiety, we shall see. Without their leader, however, they are once again powerless against me. If Catherine's coming here was indeed an accident, then Atris is bound to come for her. That is a given. The question I must now consider is, how will he do it? It is likely that his hesitation has been due, at least in part, to this dilemma. One way or another, though, he'll have to bring a linking book to get back to Dunny. There is no other way. 87.620 It's late, and I cannot sleep. I've lost so much in my life. My people, my father, my son... And you, my wife, Kita, you were the only true kindness I have ever known, watching you flicker there in the imager. Sometimes I wonder if you were real. If I could restore your life with my pen, I would do so in an instant, and leave the rest of the world to their own wretched fate. 87.730 Damn these savages! I would be well advised to leave them all in the fifth age and begin again with a clean sheet of paper. 
a stranger has arrived on Riven with the linking book to Dunny. And once again my useless minion was overtaken by the rebels. From what little I could decipher from his muddled explanation, it apparently occurred sometime this morning. The cage has been damaged, but it is no matter. Everything I need is here now. Atrus is certainly behind this, yet how could he be so foolish as to send someone here with a linking book? Such blatancy is unlike him. Could it be that he has had a change of heart? After all these years, is he finally letting his poor old father go? No, he is only after one thing. Perhaps he should find her. For now, I need only to wait and observe. Well, that's the uh, the last journal we needed to read in this game, giving us some more background information. Fortunately, it was a lot shorter than the other ones. Unfortunately, not written in uh, Catherine's handwriting, because that was really terrible. Gen's handwriting is at least reasonably readable. Well, in the next video, we will go rescue Catherine at last. Welcome back. Well, we've read Gen's second journal, and it provided us with a little bit of background. As we suspected, Gen managed to capture Catherine when she came back to Riven after her last journal entry. We also learned a little bit about Kita, Gen's wife, and how Gen left Atris to be raised by Gen's mother, the human Anna, who was called Tiana by the Dunny. Tiana was responsible for the collapse of the Dunny civilization. If you want to learn more about these events, as well as the story of Gen's defeat here on Riven, I strongly recommend that you read the novels Mist, the Book of Atris, and Mist, the Book of Tiana. Although there is no excusing Gen's actions, this journal at least gives us some insight as to the events that made him what he is. At a young age he watched his father die and his home destroyed, and then he lost his wife as well, it can't have been easy for him. Well, with all the uh, background information we need, we can go and do what we actually uh, uh, came here to do, and that is rescue Catherine. Go back to Riven, to Prison Island. Okay. And we're back inside Look down. Which we closed. Or actually open, but anyway. Um and we'll go back here. And thanks to the clock in Atris in Gen's room, we now know the combination for this, which is if we got it right. Cage will now open. Looks like we got it right. This combination is also generated randomly every time you play the game, so it will be different if you play it. Thus making it necessary to capture again before you can rescue Catherine. It's impossible to do otherwise, unless you manage to guess the combination. Or just load an earlier game. Get the code that way. We have to move quickly. Gen's people may already know what's happening. Once we're back with the moiety, we'll have time to regroup. Can I see the book? You did it. How can she tell that Gen is captured? We're all free. Because we couldn't see it. So how can she? We're, we're captured again. There's still his followers. I'm not sure what I'll do once I realize he's gone. 
I'll have to get the villagers to safety as soon as possible. You go back to the Temple Island and reopen the fissure. I know it's risky, but it's the only way to signal Atris. I'll try to make it back there as soon as I can, but don't wait for me. Don't forget, the portal combination's in my journal. Good luck. I already opened the portal. Now, unfortunately, the game makes us wait here until uh, Catherine is gone. I need to wait until my cursor comes back before I can actually do anything. Well, it sure has been a long series of videos, hasn't it? But we're finally getting to the end game. We've captured Gen. We've freed the freed Catherine. So all we have left to do is signal Atris, and we already know how to do that. So it should be simple. Okay, I'm going to reopen this dome. I'll do that. Check that the ball matches some of the blue. Which of course it does. Well once more, the combination nineteen eighteen. 14, 11, and 6. In order to get back to Temple Island, we unfortunately must go through against 233rd Age one more time. There is no maglev car or bridge or anything linking Prison Island to any of the other islands of the river. The reason for that is because Prison Island has drifted so far away from the others. We saw in Catherine's journal, she said it drifted so far away that they couldn't even see it from any of the other islands. So we go back to the 233rd age, and we need to go back to um, here, to Dome Island, because we want to open the, uh, open the Starfisher, which is on Dome Island. And of course, because we're using these linking books instead of the one Atrus gave us, we will link into a rotating dome. Not to the cage. It would have been very inconvenient for Gen if he had to link into his cage. But, uh, he went to this island by linking book. So. Open the dome. I think I may have told a lie in one of the earlier videos. I said we wouldn't have to rotate the room anymore, but I think we do. Oh. 
you may think, why do we need to rotate the room when we've... Uh, we can just go back the way we came, but we can't go back because somebody turned this bridge back. Probably uh, against people. Oh, and actually, they've also got room, so we don't need to rotate it. Well, that uh, means I didn't lie after all. Also saves us some time. Well, as you can see, we're almost out of time for this video. So we will reopen the Starfisher in the next and final video of Let's Play Riven. See you then for one final time. Welcome back for the last time. Yes, it is in fact time for the final video in this series of Let's Play Riven, the sequel to Myst. Oh, all the fun times we had. We laughed. We cried. We got captured in cages a lot. But all good things must come to an end. And so must this second chapter of the Myst series of video games. We've done all we needed to do. We got back our prison book. We captured Gen. We rescued Catherine. All that's left is to signal Atrus. Well, we already opened this um, portal. So, let's lower the telescope. So try and break the glass. What's this? I won't go any further. Ah, and if you remember, Catherine's journal told us of a stop. Which is blocking the telescope. So we remove that block, and with the final click of the button, we will reach the end. There's Atrus. There isn't much time. Where's Catherine? Where's the book? Atrus! I don't Second, we don't get to use the linking book. There was this. Uh oh. Uh -oh. as both a wall and a bridge. And though I am unable to understand how, 
The very flow of stars that brought my misbook into worthy hands, I am sure, served as a safe passage home for my friend. The Age of Riven is closed forever, but the people of Riven are free. And now I am at rest, understanding that in books and ages and life, the ending can never truly be written. And so, we finish it. It seems that... Atris believes that falling into the Starfisher will take us home. It's a reasonable belief, because he dropped his mistbook into the Starfisher and it ended up with us, with the player. So, apparently, taking the same route will take us home. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos, I certainly enjoyed making them. Riven is and will always be one of my favorite games, maybe even my favorite game, period, of all time. I love the graphics, I love the atmosphere. Sure, Riven isn't perfect. The gameplay is quite slow, the puzzles are hellishly difficult. They might not seem difficult but, uh, if you're watching this video because, well, I know how to solve them. But still, Nothing comes close to the immersion, the sheer depth of the design that this game gives us. The graphics are great. I think even Crisis cannot get close to the fidelity seen in these graphics. Sure, the resolution is low, but real-time 3D still hasn't ca caught up with this kind of detail. It might do someday soon. In which case, hopefully somebody will make a real Riven, like they did with Mist. Although even if they do, it still won't be the game that I remember playing over a decade ago. I remember losing so much sleep over. Trying to figure out these damn puzzles. But in the end, I persevered. I got to the end. And now you have watched me do it. I thank you once again for watching these videos and for taking an interest in this game. If you haven't played Riven, I strongly suggest that you find a bargain copy somewhere. I'm sure they're not too difficult to find. Might be difficult to get running on a modern PC, but still. Get Riven, get Mist, play them. And maybe I'll see you again sometime on YouTube. Hello and welcome to this bonus video for Let's Play Riven, the sequel to Myst. I mentioned during the, my playing of the game that it's possible to get some bad endings. I thought I should show you some of these. These are all the bad endings that I know of. If there are more, well, I don't know about them. The first bad ending is if you open the Starfisher before going to the Rebel Age Tay. So, let's do that. The beginning of this sequence is the same as the official ending, with the telescope collapsing and everything going to hell as the Starfisher opens. But Atrus never appears, and we simply fall into the Starfisher. This is the most boring of the bad endings, because nothing really happens. Technically, it shouldn't be possible for you to open the Starfisher before going to Tay, because it's in Tay that you get Catherine's journal, uh, which contains the code to open the portal below the telescope. But it is possible that you guess the combination by accident, or you can do what I did and simply load an earlier save game when you already have the combination. Not much happens here except us falling into the Starfisher. So at least we got home, I suppose, but uh, we condemned everybody on Riven, including Catherine, to, uh, to death.
Okay, well, I'm gonna skip the credits. The second bad ending is if you open the Starfisher after going to Tay, but for capture again. Oh, it seems that in this file I did not remove the block. Stamators does show up. There isn't much time. Where's Catherine? The book is empty. I uh -oh. understand. It's again. Supreme irony if he just got the prison book by mistake. And now we're dead too. Okay, so everybody dies in this ending, except the bad guy. Possibly the worst possible ending. Okay, the next bad ending is opening the Starfisher after you... Uh, Trapped again, and but before a uh, free encounter. I was tired. There's no time left. The age is collapsing. I've got to get back before it's too late. Your way is clear. You're free to go home. Farewell, my friend. And we fall into the starfish once again. This time we get a monologue from Atris.
Okay, well that's all the bad endings regarding the starfisher. Well, I don't think we can manage to get all the other bad endings into this video. So, I think I'll split it here and show you the rest in the next video. So, one more left. See you then. Welcome back. Well, I showed you all the bad endings uh, that had to do with the starfisher. The remaining bad endings all have to do with the prison book. The first thing we can do is use the prison book immediately after we got it back in Tay. Stupid thing to do because we just trapped ourselves. What is this? It seems that the rebels have found the book. One of them is opening it. That's the yellow glow. It seems that they are burning the book. Which means that we are trapped forever. Okay, the next thing we can do is use the prison book while on Riven. This time it is chance against uh, Minion who found the book. Apparently Gen is making him use the book to test it, thus releasing us. Ow. Forgive me. I don't believe we've met. I am Gan. And you must be the one whom Atris sent to trap me. I don't know where you got the brilliant idea to trap yourself in the book, but... I must tell you that I am quite disappointed that it is you and not Atris who must now pay the price for this foolishness. One wish before I die would be to see him finally assume some responsibility for his actions. Perhaps it will happen one day. Well, we didn't uh, rescue Catherine, but at least Gen isn't free. But I suppose most of the people on Riven will still die when the age, age collapses. Okay. The other things we can do is use the prison book after we've captured Gen. Gen is now trapped in the prison book, which we can't tell. I'm once again confused that both Aters and Catherine seem to be able to tell that somebody is in the prison book or not, while we can't tell the difference. But anyway, uh, Gen is trapped in the prison book. And so if we use it again, we set him free and trap ourselves again. I don't know exactly why you released me, but you realize, of course, that this must be the end for you. I can't take the chance that you will change your mind again. It may provide you with some solace, however, to know that with this act of self-sacrifice, you have secured your place in history. The Dani culture will be reborn, the lives of be purified. Thanks to you. Farewell. Okay, well you'd think that that's it, but we can actually do one more thing. It's possible to link back to Tay after we've already been there. There's not an awful lot that we can do here. We can just look around a bit 
and link back to uh, Riven if we want. Can't actually get back into the tree or anything. But one thing we can do while we're here is free Gen from the prison book. Brilliant idea. It appears that the moiety and I will finally be able to discuss our differences face to face. I don't know exactly why you released me, but you realize, of course, that this must be the end for you. I can't take the chance that you will change your mind again. It may provide you with some solace, however, to know that with this act of self-sacrifice, you have secured your place in history. The Dani culture will be reborn, and the lives of millions will be purified. Thanks to you. Farewell. Well, that's all the bad endings that I know of. If you know of any more, let me know and I'll uh, see if I can record those as well, but I think this is it. Oh, one thing I didn't point out when I originally uh, watched the credits. Richard A. Watson is listed as a Dunny historian. <laughs> yeah, because Dunny is real, you know. It is interesting that in Uru, uh, one of the spin-off games of the Mist series, that Richard Watson is one of the members of the Dunny Restoration Council. Okay, but we've seen the credits before. With that, I bid you farewell. Hello everyone. It has been brought to my attention by several people that I am missing a bad ending from Riven. Well, since I've gotten tired of uh, getting told this by all these different people, I decided to show it to you, go back and record it. In this bad ending, we refuse to use the prison book several times. I've already done it once, like uh, I did in the video, so now I'm gonna call Gen for the second time. There he comes. I'm relieved you've returned. I thought perhaps you had decided against it. Here, I shall follow you directly. Please. No. You're free to go, but I think you should not come back unless you are willing to use the book. Are you threatening me? People have been wondering what he's doing outside. Uh, I think he's just doing experiments, trying to figure out how this age compares to uh, what he wrote. And he wants to use that information when writing the 234th age, which is going to be his uh, sanctuary once Riven collapses. Which it will. Even if we don't open the star fissure, Riven will still collapse. It'll just take a lot longer. We can't call again again uh, without first uh, leaving. So we need to uh, link out and come back so the switch resets. We can call him. Now we're in the road. 
heading down on Village Island. We're just going to go back to 233rd age straight away. I just have to say, because I'm uh, recording this right in the middle of the Mist 4 Let's Play, just how good an actor is playing Gen. If you compare that to the mediocre performances delivered by most of the actors in Mist 4, really a shame that they couldn't get better people uh, for that game. Cirrus had been played with uh, by someone with the same amount of subtlety as Gen displays here. That would have been a great improvement, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Anyway, let's uh, refuse to use the book a third time against our better judgment. All right then, once more. The only path open to you now is through this book. Take it. No, I won't. You see, I have changed. There was a time when I might have let you live. Made that mistake with Atrus once. It's a pity you decided not to give me a second chance. What? This is time. Well, that was the missing bad ending. I'll let the credits run for all time's sake. Goodbye. Actually, we're not going to uh, let the credits roll, because this isn't actually the end yet, because there is one more bad ending that I failed to show back then. People did tell me about it in the comments, but I never ended up recording it. And um, so we'll show it now. So we're back to present day 2024 me to do that. Uh, before we do, however, I kind of want to give a little bit of a, um, a sneak peek behind the scenes here, because one of the things you may have noticed is that all of the uh, combinations in the game were the same as they were in my original uh, 2009 Let's Play. And those combinations are all randomly generated, so how could they have been the same? Obviously, I don't ha still have my save files from back then, and I don't actually know if the save files from the DVD version even work with the uh, 25th anniversary release, which uh, I sincerely doubt it does, they do. Um, so, what I did actually is use the fact that this version of Riven runs in ScumVM to uh, cheat a little bit. So, what does running in ScumVM give us? Well, as you um, no, we, if you've ever played this version, if you go to the uh, options here, you get this dialog, which is the clearest sense that we are running in ScumVM, and actually the load and save dialogs also show ScumVM UI. Um, but that's not the only thing that's available here, because um, actually there are more options. If you hit uh, Control F5, you get a uh, this dialogue and the options menu here gives you the ability to change the music and sound effects volume. I don't actually know if these are separate, if changing them separate um, actually makes a difference. I suppose uh, there's no reason that it wouldn't be so. But the the default value of this is uh, I believe it's also 192 and the sound clips something awful at that setting, at least it did on, on my machine. Uh, despite actually not maxing out the volume on the recording, it did 
noticeably clip. So I had to turn it down a lot for it uh, not to do that so you could get the clearest possible audio that I could give you in this recording. So if you play this version of the game and you care about uh, sound quality and preventing it from clipping, you uh, might also want to adjust the volume this way. The other thing you can do, however, is access the uh, debug cons console that every uh, engine that ScumVM supports is um, at least recommended to uh, implement. I'm not sure if they all do. This one does. You can type help to get a list of commands that you can use here. And uh, you'll notice that one of the commands listed here is a command named combos. And if you run that, it will tell you what the combinations are. They're, these are actually different because this is a different playthrough than the uh, than the one I used for Let's Play. This is one I did before the uh, um, uh, before the remake came out, and it had a save file that was closer to what I wanted to show off, so I used that one. Um, so these are different combinations, but it shows you what all the combinations are. It shows you the telescope combination, the prison combination, and then the uh, dome combination. But it does not let you change it here. Uh, the prison combination, of course, is sound. So each number actually matches one of the sounds on the on the uh, the clock that Gen has. And I think they are the order of the buttons in Catherine's prison from left to right. So labeled one, two, three. Uh, but you can't change the combinations with this. You can just see what they are. You can, however, there's also a var command that um, lets you show or change the value of any um, variable in the game. And um, for that, though, you need to know what the variables are. And um, there's no way to list them as far as I know. But since that combos command exists and scumvm is open source, I could go look at the source code for scumvm and see the look at the implementation of the combos command in the uh, Riven engine for scumvm and uh, see what variables they were accessing to dump that. So for, from that, I learned that the uh, telescope combination is actually T correct order. You can see that just lists the all the the sequence as one number. I don't know what happens if you change it to something that's like <laughs> has a number larger than five in it because um, I, I, it presumably breaks the game, but I haven't tried it. There's P correct order for the uh, prison sequence. Again, works the same way. And then the final one is the A dome combo. And uh, you can see that one has nothing to do with the uh, with the actual combination, seemingly. That's because this one doesn't just have numbers between 1 and 5 or 1 and 3. So you can't encode a, a value per digit because you'd run out. Uh, so what they did instead is this is actually a bit field. So if you were to uh, write this value in binary, then the bits that are 1 indicate the which numbers are in the combination. Um, so to change it, you will have to find a new bit field combination that matches what you want it to be. Uh, the easiest way to do that, the way I did it, um, is to use Windows Calculator, which has a programmer mode, which shows you the, uh, all the enabled bits and also, also uh, lets you uh, toggle them with the mouse. So it's easy to change them to whatever you want it to be, and then get the new number and insert it here. So if I wanted to make the, the telescope combination easier on myself, I could do T correct order, just do one, 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 one. And now if I run combos again, we'll see that that's now the telescope combination. and not just that, if I go back to the game and check Catherine's journal, to find the right page, I 
there we go. Now it's all it's all ones. So yeah, that updates uh, immediately as you uh, change it. Similarly, if you uh, change the the prison combination, then and then go back to again watch the sound will change. But yeah, doing that, I was able to change all the combinations to the version the values they were in my original um, let's play. So I was able to replicate the exact same like steps without having to deal with the randomness, which didn't mean that I was completely free of randomness in uh, in let's play. There were a few things that I still had to deal with, uh, mainly the uh, the war game. That's the one place where I just had to insert my original footage, regardless of how bad the quality might be, uh, because there was no way I was going to get the same uh, result. Presumably, either by messing with the debug console or maybe even just editing this, uh, the source code of ScumVM, um, I'd be able to change the randomizer seed so we would get the same sequence, but you know, finding the right seed would be very hard to do. Um, that, that definitely wasn't worth the effort. And the other thing was the, the, the other random thing that I couldn't really work around was the sunners making noise, which they did way more in my original Let's Play than when I recorded it now. And unfortunately, yeah, uh, that noise overlapped with my speech a little bit and the uh, tool I used to separate my speech from the music, uh, the game sounds, didn't quite get rid of it so you have some sounds there that don't match what you're actually seeing. I tried to avoid that as much as possible but uh, yeah, uh, there's only so much I could do here with the uh, files that are available with me. But anyway, there is one more uh, bad ending here, and the uh, bad ending that I did not show originally is to trap yourself before uh, trapping Gen, but after you've gone to see him at least once in... Uh, I think exactly once. I think you can't go back and see him again. He won't show up. Um, anyway, the to trap yourself but after you've gone and seen him in the 234th age, you get slightly different dialogue because, of course, he already knows who you are, which he did not in the version of the uh, ending that I showed. So, let's uh, trigger that. And then we are finally done with this revisit of the original Riven. I see you found the book. Thank you for returning it to me. It seems, however, circumstances have changed. I'm afraid my reunion with Atrus will have to wait. I'm so been looking forward to seeing you. Well, uh, Still time.